It's time for Windows Weekly. Lots to talk about. Windows 11, AI, Microsoft 365, Sea of Thieves. We we got it all. If it's a uh, if it's about Microsoft, Paul and Richard will talk about it next on Windows Weekly. Podcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Thorat and Richard Campbell. Episode 863, recorded Wednesday, January 10th, 2024. Full of corn. This episode of Windows Weekly is brought to you by Thinkst Canary. Canaries are honeypots, but they can be deployed in minutes. Now, if someone's accessing your lure files or brute forcing your fake internal SSH server, your canary will immediately tell you you have a problem. No false alerts, just the alerts that matter. Choose a profile for your canary device. You can choose from anything. Windows servers, Linux servers, SCADA devices. Register your canary with the hosted console for monitoring and notifications. And then sit back and wait. Attackers who breach your network, malicious insiders, any other adversaries, they will make themselves known by accessing your canary. And you'll get the alerts that matter by text, email, uh, syslog, webhooks, however you want it. It works great. Visit canary.tools twit for just $7,500 per year. You get five canaries, your own hosted console, upgrades, support, and maintenance. And if you use the code TWIT in the How Did You Hear About Us box, you'll get 10% off the price for life. You can always return your canaries with their two-month money-back guarantee for a full refund. I have to point out, though, during all the years we've partnered with Thinkst Canary, their refund guarantee has never been claimed. Visit canary.tools slash twit. Enter the code TWIT in the How Did You Hear About Us box. It's time for Windows Weekly. Hello, <laughs> Windows. Hello, dozers. All of you join together to hang with these two. Actually, if you tune in a little early, uh, you were hanging with them and talking about passwords and stuff. Paul Thorat gruntled as usual. Uh, he's mm. from Throt.com. Now I'm nervous as usual. Now he's nah. now he's nervous. Richard just agreed with me before the show, and now he's like, I'm going to jump all over you, and he's, he's going to just make fun of me for the thing he agreed Shocking. with. And Richard no, no, Campbell, are you are you in Madeira Park, or have you moved somewhere I am else? in Mad Park, but I have been modifying my color temperatures it as It looks requested. so good. Yeah. Your yeah. microphone Thank actually you. looks gold now. I mean, you're very, yeah. you almost look human today. And now it's Paul weird. looks like a vampire, thanks to you. Yikes. <laughs> so we got to really. I'm, and I kind of, I've come to appreciate that the problem is that I'm letting the natural light into this room. Yeah. And it's about 5,000 Kelvin out there, pretty yeah. darn gray. And so I just had to yeah. manually adjust the color temperatures to get yeah. us to, I am not dying. Oh, Canada. Oh, Canada. It looks like you're in the golden hour, like a sun, beautiful sunset, actually. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's very well, nice. I've been trying. Paul, We've, uh, it, you know, the downside like to tomb. being up here. <laughs> we are what we are. <laughs> I tell you. Can you, here's the deal. Just try to match your mic color to Richard's. You both have the same microphone. Uh, his is uh, gold and yours is silver. Yeah, but mine that mine is silver. This is yeah. Well, this is the right color. Actually, be a different color. <laughs> mine is actually gold, really gold. Yeah, mine's so, gold too. Oh, yeah. you have a gold mic. You sent it to me. Oh, I didn't know we sent you a golden one. I didn't know you could get yeah. a golden one. And send me a gold mic. I'll send you a gold so mic nature. next time. I'm Mine's probably sorry. just lead. Well, and I know I must have already <laughs> told this story, but you know, you weren't happy with my my AT mic, and so no. you sent me this one, which is very generous of you. <laughs> and the moment Carl heard it when we had the next .NET Rocks recording, he ordered one. Yeah, it's like that's the best yeah. sounding thing I've these ever are, heard. These are great mics. Nice. Yeah, that's why. We, yeah, we, and yeah. and then my editor Brandon pinged me and says. You know, I love that new mic. You have to reshoot all the ads. I love it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> you're like, yeah, I don't. Know. I, I had to reshoot all the ads. This, so these just... mics are good for our voices. The bos the basso yeah. profundo. They have a very nice slow sure. end. The fat they actually they're... have a squeaky voice in real life, so it must be working. Yeah, it's, it's working. just the mic doing the job. Yeah. Somebody yeah. said this conversation before the show where you were talking about passwords should really be yeah. rep reprocessed and published as Paul and Richard's ASMR. <laughs> Very <laughs> soothing. Is it because we put them to sleep? No, yeah. I think because it was soothing, the soothing sounds. You have beautiful voices, oh. and it was, it was just a beautiful sound. Yeah, hmm. uh, you know the geek out episodes that I do periodically for .NET Rocks, which are mostly me talking. 
are also the ones that are popular with kids who are tired of dad playing .NET Rocks in the in the yeah, car. Yeah, it's soothing. So these right. are about topics that are more, yeah. but it's apparently so soothing yeah. that they will put them on for the kids to fall asleep to. Yeah. And so I was looking at the log numbers for that and like the nuclear weapons one was really popular for sleep. <laughs> nice. I'm like, that's the most suppressed I've ever been yeah, making a podcast. The kids didn't understand it. So that's why yeah, it, they felt so okay. That's amazing. If they only but, knew what you were talking they about, they'd being, never go to sleep yeah, again. Yeah. Never fall yeah. asleep again. You know? Oh, great. That's amazing. Wanna, I'm not going to listen to that one. So funny. Well, so, I did two, two hour long end of year, one on energy and one on space. Oh, and uh, yeah, the notes are coming in. You know, you've done it right when everybody's angry with you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to listen. <laughs> Were you provocative? Uh, yeah. Yes, I was. Nice. There's no other way to describe it. <laughs> I shall I uh -huh. shall make sure to listen. Mm -hmm. And don't email me. Email Richard. Yeah, it's He's my his fault. own man. <laughs> I'm okay. I have good email filters. I'm right. <laughs> so n I note that neither of you are in Las Vegas at the moment. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a certain maturity to not going to Las Vegas in January that I'm proud to embrace. It's the um, senior fact, I, tech journalists who abstain. I would hope so, because all you got to do is go there a couple of times to understand you don't ever want to do this again. Yeah. You know, the first couple of times a year goes by and you're like, oh, maybe it wasn't as bad as I remember. And then you go, you're like, oh, it was worse. Mm -hmm. It's like pregnancy. Um, it's uh, carefully arranged <laughs> so that you forget the pain. My issue, though, is there are two times of year. Let me think about that. Yeah, two times a year that my tech feeds really stink. Um, one is in the buildup to Christmas because it's all sites trying to sell you like, oh, you can get this Lenovo laptop for $700 off. And they get like a kickback and the other end, like that's the only reason that article actually exists. And then in January, because these people have to justify what they're doing in Vegas. And it's like, if I see another story about it, a, a robot vacuum or a yeah. smart microwave oven or yeah. whatever other nonsense so they're looking at. Yeah. God damn. It's just such a waste of time. Um, it's awful. You know what I realized is that's why they have these mini show events uh, the day, yes. in the days before. Showstoppers. And yeah. Pepcom and Showstoppers and the yep. CES has its yep. own thing unveiled. They did a, they do it because it's highly profitable. Companies pay a lot of money to get ahead of the, basically ahead of the queue. Uh, so that the journalists who are there and want to get out like as soon as yeah. possible on Sunday right. or Monday or Tuesday before the show floor even opens, go to these events and you always can tell because it's the first item in the door, which is usually right. something dopey that gets all the, uh, attention that remember the happy fork, the haptic fork that was in the front door <laughs> at sure. Pepcom. Remember the toilet roll robot that would bring you a roll. That was also in the front door and oh, i think so these guys paid for this kind of they pay a hundred yeah, thou to get in there yeah. and uh or whatever i and, just yeah. ah boy i i i, I don't I, look i can't claim that i've done everything or even most things right in my sort of professional life but very early on i realized not reporting on things that don't matter is important mm. <laughs> you know and um you know ignoring stupid topics smart you know be, try to be a little judicious um now someone could look at the last 24 hours and find eight examples of how wrong that is just looking at my site. But that was the goal, you know? Well, no, but see, and the benefit is that we, what we, I think we've all realized is you get the kids to do it. They, they still enjoy yeah. it. And we sit back and we read their r reports, whether it's from our company or others. And, uh, right now in my case, I got a priest to do it. Father Robert. Is right, 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 right. <laughs> nice. I just saw a, I have a beautiful picture of me kissing him at CS a couple years him. ago. I love him. Um, he is there. Yeah, and the, because his, he, the look on his face is beautiful. He wears his collar when yeah. he's going around. So people like just say, oh, Father, here, please take this. Like it's a donation. Yes, exactly. And yeah, uh, so right. he will join us Sunday on Twit. And what he nice. has done in the last few years is he's laid all this swag out on the table. And uh, right. he tries to pick some good stuff and then some fun stuff. And so we'll have that on Sunday. There you go. That'll yeah, be our coverage. That'll be great. But but from a Windows point of view, I think there were some new PCs. Intel made some Yeah, well, there always are, right? So to talk I mean, about, right? Yeah, there, there is stuff, right? Uh, and uh, none of this is a robot vacuum, fortunately. Mm. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> some things that are direct related, some things that are kind of tangential, I guess. Um, the big one, of course, is, well, all well, uh, Intel and AMD both announced new, you know, PC chipsets. NVIDIA announced uh, some new GPUs. Um, the Intel stuff is a little confusing. You may, if you go back, uh, I don't know, mid-December when we talked about Meteor Lake and the Intel announcement, um, I said at the time, I talked to a buddy from Intel and he was like, 
you know, this is years different. We're doing Meteor Lake laptop only. There's not going to be a desktop version of the chip. Uh, we will realign next fall. And so for 15th gen, you know, we'll do it in the normal order and there'll be both. Great. And then Intel announced new uh, 14th gen uh, desktop chips. And I was like, wait, what? what's going on here? <laughs> and this is what's happening. Those are not ultra core. Those are core. They don't have the MPUs. And they also don't have our graphics, right? Which is a significant step up from the uh, Iris XE graphics, which that brand they, they've actually given up on. They don't talk about that anymore. It's just Intel integrated graphics. So there are, I guess the way to think of it is the 14th gen has been forked. So there's core as there has been for many, many years now, which comes in both desktop and mobile variants. They all, both announced at CES. And then there's this Meteor Lake variant that has uh, the MPU and also the Intel art graphics. I, I didn't, I'm embarrassed to say, I don't know. No, I do know. I'm sorry. Um, the, the 14th gen non ultra chips are just the same architecture they've had for the past, actually three generations. Right. So, um, it is a minor upgrade over the 13th gen chipset. It's kind of a placeholder in some ways. I don't really see these as being a big deal. And I, I, I said this to Brad this morning, but the other morning I walked by a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop that I actually have to reset and send back to them. And I, I reviewed that, I don't know, sometime in December, I guess. And I looked at it and I thought to myself, this is the, the, the end of the line, right? We're not going to see these non NPU, non AI PCs anymore, but I guess we are right. Because Intel's still doing these non NPU chips. I, I, I think one of the, we'll talk about this in a little more detail in a bit, but one of the weird things right now is we're in such a transition phase that there aren't really a lot of great AI applications. And I, I say that, I don't mean like apps literally, but ways in which you can use AI locally on a PC, it's kind of a thin you know, area right now. I think that is going to change, but I still would not buy a PC now without getting an AI chip in it. I, if I was buying a brand new PC right now, I would never consider a non ultra core or it's equivalent right and when you're saying pc you're really only thinking laptop right like well I, right now i have to mean that because there is no version of a desktop pc with that integrated in although mm -hmm. I, I i've been talking about this for a while without having ever seen one but intel does have an architecture where you can plug in an mpu yeah um, well to and, I, and i bring that up for exactly that reason is i'm i'm because i'm trying to do image recognition on small form factor stuff for the house i'm actually mm -hmm. trying to identify the animals Okay. Uh, I can, there's a few different variations of TPUs that are on a uh, small PCI bus and M2. Huh. Okay. And right. So, okay. There you go. I wasn't sure. Yeah. I, I, Brad asked me about, the, is it like PCI express? Is it M M2? Like I actually don't know, but the PC all, you have all of these above. And there's also a USB version, but they, it's a little okay. bit bandwidth constraint. Well, I, since we're talking about this real quick, one of the things that's kind of interesting about this to me right now is that because there haven't been that many MPUs out in the world in the PC mm -hmm. space, right? Qualcomm has had them for a few years, but nobody really buys those computers. Um, none of the local AI type apps are really designed for that. They're nice. designed right. right off of GPUs. And one of the interesting side effects of NVIDIA's kind of dominance of this space is that uh, not only are they now starting, and that's part of their announcement this week, they're really... Uh, they're starting to put these beefy GPUs for PCs that are optimized not for games, although they're great for games. <laughs> they're optimized for AI based on the years of experience they've had coming from these companies coming and say, look, this is what we need. This is what we need. This is what we need. Um, these apps are all uh, optimized for the hardware as well. So GPUs right now actually have kind of an interesting leg up on uh, MPU as, as far as just hardware accelerated AI workloads i guess well, the, the sure original scalar processor like there's always been an argument about why are we bothering making something new and we've solved this with the gpu so i don't know if you've seen them in nvidia <laughs> oh, yeah, like no, this. Yeah. and that, well, that might be why so i, I and it can one warm of the, the house right it's yeah, a double so, wide full length <laughs> pci card with three fans on it and it's yeah. not enough you you have surely noticed this surely on your mm -hmm. computer because uh, <laughs> you have an mpu in your um, uh, your surface Mm -hmm. that the only kind of mainstream application for it right now, and it's built into Windows, is this Windows Studio Effects thing, right? Yeah. And this is just all the stuff we're all, it's all very common across all of our um, Teams and Zooms, you know, Zoom type apps where, you know, it does background blur or background, background replacement. It does, you know, it, your eyes look like they're, you know, moving forward. Even you're always you, looking at the camera. It, it, yeah. it, you know, it comes with you when you move and all that kind of stuff, right? So 
you look at the the Microsoft solution for this, you think, well, what, what do you need an MPU for this for, right? I mean, we already have this stuff, but that stuff relies on so is either software based fully or hits the GPU. It will, you know, depending on what you have, depending on the solution, they'll do what they have to do. But how is that different from a GPU, really? Like it's because it's kind of the same thing. Really. No, it's literally the same thing. It's just that yeah. the the N, the MPUs that were first developed by Qualcomm are were designed for the mobile space, right? That's where they yeah. came from. They came from these very small, low watt devices, and they're just more efficient. So Microsoft wrote their AI product, Windows Studio FX, to that. And the idea, the thing is, it's not you're not generating an image, something that might take thirty seconds. You're not doing a one-off thing. You're in a video call, and you might be, you know, with this call, we'll be here for two and a half hours today, right? Uh, I'm not going to blur my background, and, and I don't have that here anyway. But um, you want so if you're going to be in a call, you want that to be efficient. This is like mm -hmm. a this is an ongoing workload, right? It's a not it, it doesn't. End, I mean, it does end, but it it's it's not a quick hit. You're done. It's it has to run the whole time. So yeah. that that's the point of it. Um, but yes, I, I, this year, you know, Richard's made a big point and he's right, you know, in the sense that 2024 is the, the year that AI needs to be implemented. Yeah. There's actually a, a nuance to that because it doesn't, it also needs to be optimized for whatever the chipsets are that people have. Right. And, uh, and I know in the Intel ultra core, there's a, I don't remember the name they use, but there's like, like an Intel AI engine, which literally may be the name, by the way. And it, it, it doesn't just mean we use the MPU. It means we look at the workload and we route it intelligently through Intel Arc, which is a GPU, uh, mm -hmm. or uh, the MPU, uh, whatever that's called. Um, and, you know, it's an, it's, it, it's an intelligent system. Some, the GPU is better, I think, for a lot of things right now because of its, its experience. It's been in the market for so long. It's also, yeah. I also think it's much wider, right? Like the ability to ray trace onto a 4K screen requires yeah. so much more parallel processing than is typically needed for a neural net. I, it's kind of overkill. Not not a hardware expert, but I believe the MPU, the Intel MPU is two cores. Yeah. <laughs> so not, so it, not it, the 12,000 that's yeah, in my yeah. 4060, right? Right, so, exactly. And, and, you know, just like processor cores, my God, like even the latest, you know, the ultra core, whatever the, I don't even know the names, whatever the I five, I seven, or I guess it would yeah I five, I seven equivalent. I mean, I think these things are like 16 cores and they, they yeah. don't just have performant and efficient. They have a couple of ultra efficient mm -hmm. and that's the little God, my God, 20 years later, Intel's finally paying attention to mobile. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, I love to see it. Um, well, when, when, and when I we're wonder how much of this is all derived from mobile, right? The original tensor out yeah. of the phone, like every time we describe this, I'm like, this came from a phone. Right. And that's right. why it's so thin and light and, and low power and so forth, because it had to run a phone. This is, uh, you know, I, I, I love and hate Steve Jobs for all the right reasons. But one of the things he I think he got right and, and he had and he had a special way of just communicating it in a very plain English way where normal people would understand it, which is the thing we miss from with him, is that there's a virtuous cycle that occurs. Right. And in his case, what he was referring to is we we had this big unix based computer system and we shrunk it down so it would fit on a phone but we also added all these things to it that were unique and really cool and now we're bringing that stuff back to the mac right so we right. kind of went down to a phone we did the ipad and now we're kind of it now everything benefits from everything it's not just one thing pushing in one direction it's literally you know that virtuous yeah, cycle but it it makes sense that you start with the base set the phone mm -hmm. is the hardest problem if you solve it for the phone it'll work yeah. its way through everything else sure you're just yeah, not so, going to get that 4080 running in a phone. That's not right, a thing. Right. And and that might, I, I still don't, maybe it would just be, maybe it would just look so lackluster by comparison. But if you think, I don't know what a, a mobile GPU looks like, you know, you have a, a, G, a dedicated GPU chipset in your laptop. Obviously it's not a giant card like no, you see in a PC. It's a sock, right? It's, it's just a, a little tin box. Yeah, it's a little thing, but you know, with a lot of pins on it. Yeah, comparatively, it's probably still bigger than the processor and whatever else, but it's still maybe relatively yeah. tiny. So the difference between the CPU, the GPU, and the MPU on a, on a mobile system is probably not dramatic physically. Mm -hmm. But when you go to a desktop computer, the GPU is this thing that's the size of a Volkswagen. Yeah. Um, I don't I think they might just not be ready to have an MPU that can uh, exist in that world. It makes sense. That might be why we're seeing this because knee jerk. My reaction is I don't understand why you would ignore desktop. And I think it's because the people who want this stuff on desktop have already bought really beefy GPUs Yeah, and they're using these they don't really AI scientific work. Well, and, and I see no be. reason to get that large. There are little uh, four lane cards, which are probably mm -hmm. enough on PCIe, but the more logical form factor is M2. 
the yeah, thing you typically right. stick SSDs into. But that is a PCI bus connection, and it's that's nice right. and small. And you take a a, a Google Coral, which oh normally God, the- you interface through a USB port. If you pull that chip out, you can stick it on a, an M2 chassis, I, I, and it'll drop in your machine. This has been a theme today. I'm not really good at the details, but I did read in a fascinating article about M2 versus like even the fastest whatever bus, like uh, Thunderbolt 4, mm-hmm. whatever they th- or they're saying for five USB 4. It is an order of magnitude faster yeah. to go over PCI Express, whatever the whatever. Yeah, and a modern and, uh, ATX motherboard has four of them. Yeah, it's listen, sort of, you don't need you get you can get two terabyte SSDs now. You don't need more storage. Oh my god, use that I, it, slot for something else. This is like you know, like Wi-Fi seven, right? F- yeah. Fascinating. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, except for there's this thing called Ethernet, and I'm sorry, I don't care how good it is, it's yes. just not on the same page, and that's what PCIe versus USB Thunderbolt whatever yeah, is, right? Not it's the same the, league. It's just not the same thing. It, there's a convenience, you know, to plugging things in and out and all that stuff. But anyhow, so that's where we're at. That's the Intel bit. So uh, to me, that was in the PC space. I, you know, this is a big deal. And then we don't have to go through most of these. No, the one I want to talk about is the Aces Nut because that makes me happy. Uh, okay. Well, I was going to say, so all the PC makers, all the major PC makers have announced mm-hmm. everything, right? So this is what happens to CS. So what, what mm-hmm. what's the Acer thing that you love so much? The, the Aces Nut. Yeah. They, they, oh, the NUC, of course. They, I'm sorry. Take, I love NUCs, right? And I do so. and uh, yeah. uh, and I love that 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 I understood why the Lenovo move away from because they made some beautiful machines. No two ways about it. The, 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 my question, of course, is a Aces immediately went to gaming NUCs, which seems insane. What I really want is fanless NUC. That's like right. That was my favorite NUC of this them all. Is, yeah, I, I've owned several NUCs. I never owned one of the gaming ones. This was like Skull Canyon and those names, whatever yeah. those things were. Um, that to me, I look at, I mean, this is a, a small form factor computer to me. It's not yeah. really a knuck, but, but I, I love that they're going forward with this. I do expect to see, uh, uh, replacements at some point for the traditional, you know, we're talking laptop chipsets in like a tiny little square package. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, if, what if you made a laptop with no screen, no keyboard, no battery, like yeah, what are you left you with? You're, you're yeah. left with a deck of cards. Uh, yeah, and, and wanted to. It's where you, you know, the whole ubiquitous computing thing involves computers you can't notice. So they better not have a screaming yeah. fan in them. So this was all right. This was the deal with um, the uh, about a month ago. I got an HP Spectre X360, the new version. They just announced it the other day, right? So this is with the funky hinge, Ultra Core. Yeah, it's, it's I, that I don't care, but I just use it as a laptop because everybody does. But it's a beautiful machine and all that stuff, and that's fine. And there's a lot going on in there. They have a nine, I think it's a nine megapixel, uh, you know, 4K video webcam built into this tiny little screen thing, which is awesome. And there's a lot of stuff going on there. But obviously, the big deal is the um, the new processor, the Ultra Core with the the new integrated graphics and um, the MPU. And like I said earlier, there's not a lot. And I want to see that in a NUC, right? Right, Because right now, I would say there's not like a lot going on in the AI space, but actually Mm -hmm. this thing is a significant step up, just performance generally, and then GPU performance, right? Over the integrated graphics. And it's it's not a Meteor Lake. This is generation before. This is, no, it's Meteor Lake. This is Meteor Meteor Lake. Okay. So the thing that's interesting about it is that there's, there's always been this kind of dividing line between what I would call like an ultra book, like a... A ThinkPad X1 Carbon, or you know mm-hmm. that everyone there's really thin light thing that's yeah, so it, you thin know, you can julienne fries with them, right? Yes, like, and you bring it out in the world and you do Word and Excel and your web browser and all that stuff. It's great for that stuff, right? So those things are great. And then you know the next thing up is like an inch thick gaming laptop with RGB lights and blah blah blah, and it's all you know it's loud and it's uh, you know the battery life is like two and a half seconds. And yeah, that's time you know, for you to move the pl- power plug from one space. Yeah, to exactly. Right. Right. So, <laughs> go, get it, go, go. So <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. So I I feel like the one. The big contribution to Meteor Lake in the short term is actually just that they've bridged that gap. There's this thing in the mm-hmm. middle now. So I, I installed a bunch of games on it just to kind of see, like, it literally has no dedicated GPU. There is a 16-inch version that does or can. This one is just using those Intel Art graphics. And I got to say, honestly, like, it's not, a, it's not a gaming PC. I want to be very clear. But then again, the types of people who would want to play a modern 3D shooter at higher than 1080p, as a tiny, it's important, but tiny audience, whereas the, the a more mainstream group that, hey, I can, you, you're telling me I can play Half-Life Black Mesa now at ultra settings all on at yeah, native and, resolution? And 240 frames a second. Oh, yeah, no, that's <laughs> awesome. And I, for someone like me, like I, and I, in this regard, I'm, I'm semi-normal. I, and I know that's gonna, there'll be some contention about that. Yeah. But the, 
I like your version I, I just of normal. Let it, let's, let it, let's let it flow over you for a second. <laughs> let that go for a second. Um, <laughs> just let that one go. Uh, I don't, I mean, I'm not, out, I'm not there with a controller playing, you know, whatever. Uh, but this, it works. Like it works well. Um, so I think that's, I think that's really neat. Like there's a, there is this midline, not a gaming PC, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it will evolve to be, you know, someone like your wife who might need to do her work on the road, but doesn't want to carry something big or whatever. Yeah. She needs that. She needs that 3d cat horsepower. Like no two but is about it. It's part of her yeah. job. I mean, but you, she, you, but you have to, does she need a single RGB light on her keyboard? Not a one. Right? <laughs> Would she enjoy one? Well, no. And, and no skulls, please. Right. Yeah, like there, are, <laughs> right there are no skulls. There's no RGB. It's, <laughs> it looks like a traditional, um, you know, productivity, yeah. ultrabook, whatever. Even even if a couple of jet engine fans have to crank up to really let that GPU do its thing, but you know yeah. that's that's rendering, man. That's fine, but right, that's right. But yeah, have the horsepower. Yep. So I I think that's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I didn't I didn't pay too much attention to the new Intel stuff. Otherwise, the AMD stuff either. Nvidia is now getting far more into software than I recall them ever talking about before. And I think this is smart because they're protecting an ecosystem now, right? They yeah. know that. Well, we're also at a fragmentation moment. We yeah. need a new set of drivers and whoever mm -hmm. can command that. Well, the, the big thing here is if you leave this up to third parties, your product will be poo-pooed because the driver's bad. Yeah. Just ask. Well, Vista. they're even uh, they're even doing and and you well uh, developer or whatever software like they're writing right. you know AI. They're going all now. the way through to the AI workbench. So I think and, and I think it's exactly for that reason. You want to show off your hardware. You got to make sure the software doesn't suck. Yep. I, this is um, uh, what do you call this? Maybe ecosystem protection. It makes yep. total sense. Um, and who knows? I I kind of talk about how they kind of waltz into this market and all this stuff. But the reality is they dominate right now. They are yeah. kind of the Intel. And they're choosing space. not to sit back because the logical yep. thing for the competitor to do is to do a better end to end solution mm -hmm. and, and be able to embarrass their inferior, your superior hardware with their better implementation. So the right. fact that they're on this is how you protect your lead. Yeah. I, I think what they're doing is smart. So I mm -hmm. love, you know, good for them. I think that's yeah. all good. No, no, I, I, and more power to them, you know, they, they've been doing good things all along. I love that they found a new market. Welcome yeah. to the Trillion, you know, Valuation yeah, Club. Welcome to the club, my God. Yeah, hello. Yeah, by market cap, they're the biggest hardware maker, yeah. in the, uh, the biggest uh, chipset maker. But what they haven't done is what most tech companies do, which is freak out when you're in the lead. Yeah, I, right now they're, yet. they're they mm -hmm. seem poised right now. So we'll see if that yeah. lasts, but uh, it, it's hard. Yeah. Tech companies yeah. suck at leading. They like chasing. <laughs> you know, that's what <laughs> that's they know true. how to do. And so yeah. it's like, can you actually keep focusing on your knitting when you're in front? Right. No, that's true. Um, uh, most of these other things I have here aren't specifically PC related, but there's a, there's a reason for this. There, there's kind of an interesting thing going on now. Um, I, this is in a variety of ecosystems, a variety of ecosystems, mm -hmm. it's kind of like mobile, smart home, whatever. And the idea is we have all these devices and we have phones, we have uh, computers, obviously tablets, we have TVs, we've got smart home devices around the house. And uh, if you're in the PC space, uh, Windows as you are, you're here, um, you may know that there are these competing standards for doing things like sharing files or casting a screen to another device. And that uh, we don't really get to take advantage of a lot of this stuff in the Windows space. So um, Mir what? Miracast is lovely, Paul. I said no one who has ever used Miracast <laughs> ever. It is the biggest pile of crap. And I, it, it's always bothered me. I, uh, Chromecast as a product line or whatever mm -hmm. is over 10 years old now. Mm -hmm. um, I've always wanted I, I them. I still recommend them because yep, they're so I, good. I would love for Microsoft. I, I don't understand why they never it's just such a solved that. problem. Yeah, it's so, such a solved problem. Um, Google last, was it last year? Google last year. Yeah, uh, well, it might have been over a year ago, but last year they, they improved something called Nearby Share, mm -hmm. which is their version of Nearby Sharing, which is a Windows feature that allows two computers to, you know, and share you, files. You know, I'm starting to care about this because I finally got rid of my Active Directory infrastructure in my house. Right? <laughs> right. So I was just the two of us and we actually just want to share files. It's like, I really don't want to stage this through one drive. Can I just give you this file, I, please? It doesn't matter how technical anyone listening to this is admitted. Mm -hmm. You have all done this. I emailed a file to yourself. Yep. You have 100%. done all the stupid stuff. I, yeah. I will save it to OneDrive on this computer, go over here and load it on OneDrive on this computer. Yeah. Like I, we've all done this, but the thing is when, you know, back in the day, this is still built into windows. It does not work very well at all, but there's this kind of standard file, SMB file share uh, technology to give you an idea of how old this is in 2001, Microsoft released Windows XP, and one of the big features was something called Simple Share. And Simple Share 
was designed to make the Windows NT share that's still in Windows today, by the way, simpler. Mm -hmm. um, the problem is that since then, we have these new authentication types and we have online accounts that we sign in with and you cannot type in your Microsoft account and then your password and have it do anything. It does not work. No. And uh, you have to really know what you're doing to get that stuff to work. And um, it's hard. And there, basically, you just have to do a workaround, which it's not worth discussing here. But um, anyway, we had home groups for a little while. Remember that? Windows 7? Mm -hmm. um, those are gone. And now I remember we have, home server. It was a beautiful day. When, oh, God, home server, of course. So now we have uh, nearby sharing. Um, and nearby sharing is great, but it's non-discoverable. It only works on Windows. It's not cross-platform. Um, Google brought their nearby share to Windows, but you have to install an app. It only works between, you know, Android and Windows, obviously. Um, Apple has their own stuff. They have their casting technology, AirPlay. They have, uh, well, it's better than, it's more than casting, but we'll call it casting. And they have uh, AirDrop, right? Which is a way to share files between uh, Apple devices. But again, proprietary. Um, Amazon, or during CS, that's why I mentioned this, adopted something called batter casting. <laughs> So, right. and I look at this stuff and I think, oh, and I, I should also say a nearby share on Android is going to turn into something called a quick share because Samsung, because this is what they do, had their own sharing product called quick share. So Google and Samsung are partnering. They're, they're going to rename to quick share. They're going to adopt the best of both. And, uh, and that's fun. It's fun. If you're on Android, it's, it doesn't really help Anybody all this else. other stuff. Yeah. So well, it's, it's you're strengthening your own ecosystem so that you'll spend more time there. It's like feeling more walled gardeny than you're used to from Google. I, when Microsoft introduced Cortana to the PC in Windows 10, I made All the argument. 10 minutes of it, yeah. I, I know. It, it was a burst. It was a little, yeah, it flew too close to the sun and burst into flames. But at the time, I said, in keeping with the philosophy of Windows, what we should have is a default uh, assistant interface in Windows that we could plug in if we want to use the, or the Google thing or whatever else we should be able to replace Cortana with that. And now what I'm going to say is they are, they don't, you don't really see this word in the UI, but it is Miracast that Microsoft uses in Windows. Mm -hmm. If if I go, you know, uh, Windows key plus K is that cast screen. Um, I I should be able to cast to Chromecast. I should be able to cast to, you know, Air. I guess it would be AirPlay. I should be able to cast to Matter Casting now. I mean, I would like to see Microsoft actually adopt something. That works everywhere. What a thought. Well, you know, I mean, an idea. And the, de the dev team routinely does this where they won't do their own implementation yeah. of a of a popular open source library. And we need more of the company to do that sort of thing. I just am delighted at the idea that you think that these companies will possibly agree to use the same implementation oh, of a given standard. Oh, no, no, no. I don't believe that at all. I, I know they're not going to. But what I, I, I look, Apple's not going to change. Apple's always going to no, be Apple. It's going to be HomeKit. Yep. So the, I. Okay. I don't know. I feel I I think one of the biggest missing uh, or missed opportunities, I guess I'll call it in personal technology, is that Google hates Microsoft so much that they can't see that this is a natural partnership to counter Apple and they should be working together and that whatever casting technologies that Google has should be in Windows natively and I I think we're going to talk is this in here please tell but me this, this is but you know why Google's jumpy is because they collaborated yes. with Microsoft to advance the W3C standards that, that Apple was resisting on it. And it right. ended up with Microsoft finally going, you know, we agree on all these things. We're just going to use your library now. And, 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 <laughs> they, you know, that should be complimentary. They should be I, I would uh, hope they would see this. it that way, right? That that's actually a better answer. I, I also wonder how they actually feel about Kubernetes because, you know, Kuber, right. having Ku the container market consolidate on Kubernetes is very good for the industry. Right. But it was one of Google's competitive advantages at the beginning. And then Brendan Burns went to Microsoft okay. and then AKS implementations. And then in, you know, when Amazon jumped on board, it's like game over. The big vendors all yeah. use the same container stand. I think the, you know, uh, we talked about this a few months ago. There's this notion of native cloud apps now, right? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And I will not, that's not a notion, Paul. Come on. That's a real <laughs> thing. Okay. I'm making shows about it, so it must be real. There you go. So I, uh, but th that's the point. Th that's the Microsoft of 20 years ago. Uh, native cloud apps would have been native to Windows or, or mm -hmm. Azure native or whatever they had native the they would, apps. They, That would have been native. Now these things are designed literally to be they don't really, it's cloud agnostic. You could be mm -hmm. on Google, could be on AWS, could be on Azure, it doesn't matter. And and to me, that is the reality of the Microsoft of today. I think Google, when they came up in the world 20 years ago-ish, Microsoft was dominant and they just had a very natural fear that if we're going to get stabbed in the dark, 
it's going to be by this company and his co-founders put this into their kind of corporate mentality or whatever. And I think it's still there and it's too bad because there's an opportunity here and Microsoft has indicated many times their willingness to work with Google. Granted, they are not exactly helping in Google's current antitrust case, but, you know, leaving that aside. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I am not sure how Google feels for a company that generally has been more open than Microsoft ever was. Right. But it's almost like, you know, the subtext of all of this is the game of corporate giants playing the open source game. And yeah. in some ways, I think Microsoft has outmaneuvered Google in the open source game mm -hmm. in a pretty profound way. Right. For crying out loud, they own GitHub. I know. I know. And I, people I, are happy about that. I, I, right. No one could have foreseen this. No. Um, I just think that these companies need, I, 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 to answer what you said earlier, no, I don't believe that will ever happen. I really don't. I mm -hmm. wish it would. I, we would all benefit uh, from yeah. this uh, collectively, and it would be smart. Um, it's too bad. So uh, all I know is there's <laughs> different casting things occurring, different file share, wireless file share, whatever you want to call yeah. that. Uh, and Microsoft is really not a big part of any of it. And um, they need to, I don't know, license something, do something. I, this is yeah, this part of me that says this is just not that this is almost like too consumer centric for them. Well, and yet they make the consumer operating system that a lot of people run like, yeah. Yep. We need the Windows client guys to look and go, oh, yeah, we know we should probably be. Able well, to. like I said, you know, 2021 uh, PCs were so not just ubiquitous, but the only personal computing platform that mattered mm -hmm. that they could they felt it was important to make file share over network, a home network easier. Right. And then they did home groups and which integrated with home, Windows Home Server, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the very early 2000s. Uh, and then they have done nothing uh, since except well, then small businesses started to use it and the corp group got freaked out and they killed the whole line. Yep. It's gone. Yeah. So I, oh, I know. So it's the small business editions. Thanks very much. Right. So this it's a different world mm -hmm. and uh, it's a heterogeneous world. And I, I think interoperability is the key and you know, Windows still has a sizable user base. A lot of yeah, people use you. Everyone who uses a Windows PC uses a phone of some kind, like, you know, Paul, and I know that I know that it sell cloud because if it doesn't sell cloud, uh, right, 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 right. Which is why, yes, uh, there is a share experience in Windows today that uh, debuted in Windows 8 and has been updated in small ways. But one of the weirdest things about Windows 11 today, see this for yourself, is select a file uh, somewhere in a OneDrive folder and mm -hmm. share and look at the UI, see what it is, see what your choices are. And then grab another file somewhere that's not in OneDrive, do the same thing. And it's a completely different share interface. Guys, Yeah, you can't even get your own share interface. To get, like, what are you doing? What do you mean? They got uh, at least six of them. Uh, it's crazy. So uh, anyway, I'm not saying I matter casting is the answer. I'm not saying Google cast or Chromecast is the answer, but mm. maybe I am. I think one of those is the answer. Maybe both of them. I don't know. Why don't we give people options and work with what they have? Yeah. What, a phone what, link is not cutting it. I can tell you that. Boy. Um, yeah. No, I'm ready to turn that thing off. It's making me crazy. But it's not just phone link, you know, it's, or phones, it's screens and all the other devices. You know, I want to, uh, some, some of the TVs I've experienced in my life, actually, I bring up the, uh, project, you know, project, uh, remote display and it, there it is. Yep. And, and the one, but the ones I have in my house right now, nope, no. not there. So, and they're Samsung devices. Those guys used to be really big on Miracast. Yeah. No, these days we, the one thing we're using up here more than anything is, casting youtube to the tv yeah and how do you do that just from your phone from pick phone, the yeah. thing you want to do and i i mean it's not surprising that i'm doing it. i'm blown away that she's doing it yeah and i'm nice. like well, how are you watching this she goes oh i send it to you from youtube i'm like okay that's uh, awesome wow yeah, <laughs> yeah well, that, there you go that's the <laughs> yeah no that's great that tells you it's yeah. gotten fairly ubiquitous so it it's works. nice yeah and it works yeah it has to just work too yeah that's it she yeah it's got to work first try she's not going to do the second try Moving on. And this this isn't related to Windows, but I kind of wanted to throw this in here because um, if if AI hadn't exploded the way it had last mm -hmm. year, I think the way I would have broken down 2023 is I would have selected at least five and as many as eight of the really kind of big stories uh, of that year. And that would have been how I would have defined that year. But, you know, yep. AI obviously overwhelmed the whole everything. Thing. But but one of those stories was how matter ended up really not mattering too much. Right. No. Um, they They came up with a standard. Everyone said yes. And nothing works together. Yeah. Um, 
All the devices I, I was mean, told. just the same way Zigbee came out. It was, that yeah. was the standard. Everybody agreed to use it. Right. Nothing works together. So a lot of this stuff actually came out of Google, including one of the two network protocols that it supports, which is something called Thread. The other one is you know, Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And what I got, apparently, I didn't know this, but one of the problems with Thread is that if you bring in Thread devices from different ecosystems, you know, Amazon, Google, uh, whatever the other, you know, third, uh, HomeKit, and then all the third-party ones, whatever, um, they're all basically on their own segregated network yeah. <laughs> over Thread. I, somehow, they never thought that they needed to let the you know it they're doing it in a way that's basically like a credential pass through but it, to the end user it doesn't matter the point is to the end user these things are all in the same home network they should all be talking together and seeing each other and the idea is that i should have one device from this company one from this one one from this one and whatever dashboard i choose to use the google home app the home kit whatever it doesn't matter it should see all of them and i should be able to do routines and you know all that stuff and one of the reasons that, that matter hasn't kind of worked out is that thread actually doesn't support that today so no nope. uh, unless CES, you're using home assistant unless you're using uh that's fascinating because that's actually <laughs> that's actually what brad is using right now that's funny right so uh yes so that but which is like i just it's like a it's not really, but maybe it is. I think of it as a Raspberry Pi that solves all your problems, yep. <laughs> kind of a thing. Except don't run um, on a Raspberry Pi. Run it on a Right, Android. but that's what I mean. But it's sort yeah. of that kind of a device. Yep. Um, yes. So hopefully, if in a perfect world, that will no longer be necessary um, because this the underlying protocol should just support this. Duh. duh it's the, the point of matter is literally yeah. interoperability. You we shouldn't be working around this. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, sometime this year, uh, that will happen, but this will fall back on yeah. the companies to support it. So. I do not believe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. I, they've done it. Why would it be different this time? Like, no reason to. Yep. But you so. know, we keep kicking a kick at that football. It's gone so well so far. <laughs> Someday I'm going to connect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Speaking of Lucy. Hey. Yep. Lucy. <laughs> oh, no, the other Lucy. Sorry. Let's, yep. uh, <laughs> let's save that for a moment because I want to tell you about uh, one of our fine sponsors, if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. ACI learning then we'll get to lucy the football and all that stuff <laughs> aci learning you know that name uh for a long time on this show and all of our shows we talked about it pro tv well it's now aci learning but that's really good news because they've added well it's kind of two great flavors combined in one uh you already know the name it pro tv from our network as part of aci learning IT Pro has expanded its capabilities, providing more support for IT teams. ACI Learning now covers all your audit, cybersecurity, and information technology training needs. Of course, you're going to get a personal account manager to make sure you're not wasting your team's time. Your account manager works with you to ensure your team only focuses on the skills that matter to your organization. So you can leave unnecessary training behind. Your team will like it, too, because they're not relearning something they already know. ACI Learning, of course, kept all the fun, all the personality of IT Pro TV while amplifying their robust solutions for all your training needs. Let your team be entertained as well as informed while they train. And with short-form content and over 7,200 hours to choose from, there's no better training out there. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. If you have a team, fill out the form. You'll get a free trial, and the discounts are huge, up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise solution plan. That's a great deal. Go.acilearning.com slash twit. We thank them so much for supporting Windows Weekly. All right, on we go with the show, and uh, let's talk Windows 11. Yeah. Windows. I buried the lead because Microsoft announced a new key for Windows keyboards. For Copilot. No. Wait a minute, just one? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is it, uh, I don't know, schwa? What is it? So it's, it's, it's a Copilot key. Oh, so what's it look like? I, I was <laughs> delighted to watch all of my uh, colleagues in my space uh, get the story wrong. It's the first new uh, key on a Windows keyboard in over 20 years. You no, know, it isn't. No, it's not. Do we need, no, it isn't. <laughs> do we need I know Matt, Apple does no. this now. Do we need a right. dedicated operating system nope. key? No. no, we don't. Uh, and it just makes. I it mean, I, and, and besides, and, we already have one. Well, we have I, a Windows key. Yeah, yeah but I, I feel well, like now we got two. We don't. Yeah, we don't take advantage of some of the things we could be doing, like getting rid of superfluous keys, like caps lock. You mm -hmm. know, 
Um, also, we could be doubling up functionality on certain keys. So, so caps lock, for example, double uh, tap maybe if shift. you pressed and held on shift or something or double tap shift, it would do mm -hmm. that. You know, it, it could toggle a light or something so you could know it was in that mode, whatever. I mean, there's there's a lot of efficiencies we could be doing. Um, I, I would say the, the Windows key solves a purpose because it opens the start menu. And I do think, uh, you know, as someone who uses the keyboard a lot, I, I do like that nice. It's easier than control escape, you know, or whatever, which is the, also the shortcut. Yeah. But uh, yeah, do we need a co-pilot key? No. No. <laughs> Until we don't. <laughs> and um, especially because co-pilot on Windows is so terrible right now, right? Mm. Um, now that could change. Uh, they, I don't know. I, I, this came up with, uh, Satya Nadella. I think it came up with, um, who else talked about this? Uh, da, 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 someone else at Microsoft talked about this notion that Copilot will one day maybe replace start, you know, that this will be our app orchestrator. And this is where we will, where we will literally start lowercase s, you know, getting stuff done. And yeah, that's, that's fine. And then, and, and in the five to 30 years, it takes for that to happen. You know, maybe we can talk about this key, but Maybe at that point, that becomes the Windows key. I mean, what's the difference? I, I don't. So the, here's the good news. Um, I, uh, you're not going to see this on all keyboards, for one thing. Um, it is replacing a key that has different names, uh, the menu key. Uh, you'll see on the right side of a lot of keyboards, uh, right side of the uh, space bar, which is the context menu key, right? Which, right. like the Windows key, is related to functionality that debuted, not really, but debuted officially formally in the OS in Windows 95 and was not particularly discoverable or underst well understood by the user base. And uh, they thought if, you know, people will look at this thing and say, oh, look, it makes a menu come up, you know. Um, so people weren't using that. Microsoft, of course, had an Office keyboard with an Office key. Um, and all the Office apps have their little goofy window Office key shortcuts, which you can still do through a contorted three or four uh, key shortcut and blah, 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 whatever. But yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I'm not really. Well, yeah, and, and I'm just looking down at this keyboard going, well, I have two windows keys. That's a lot of windows. Do you really? And, yeah. Oh, uh, really? One, one on each side of the space bar. It, it, it oh, goes wow. windows key, alt space bar, alt windows key. Oh boy. Well, yeah. that's a, I guess that's good for lefties or something. I don't know. I don't know. It's just too enthusiasm. It's like, look, re and, and then there is that context menu key the one that right. nobody oh, yeah, that as well oh okay yeah so, so you, like, you kind of like uh everything to be symmetrical <laughs> whatever yeah, well i only have one of the context menus keys because it's all it is after all right click so why that's should true. it only be on the right that's right <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of a weird thing i i don't know anyway i don't i feel I don't like keyboards this should be standard across the board i do too i oh god uh, please that would be the best mm, no yep. chance that's something actually google give them a little credit uh people around here, these parts probably don't pay attention to this but uh, Chrome OS keyboards are pretty damn standard. Like they're, they're they almost exactly the same everywhere. They do have menu key, you know, that one. Yeah. 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 Yep. I just, I feel Which like I, what's happened, it's the same thing that happens on the uh, first page of your phone is companies decided that's keyboard is realist, is valuable real estate. Let's put an ad there. That's and, right. And I yes. don't want an ad there. I right. want It's a like standard. when you buy a, 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 like a streaming box that has like, Preset buttons yeah, for Netflix, that Hulu, and for. Yeah. whatever. And you're like, I only subscribe to one of those. And it moves yeah. around you know? because it's been <laughs> oh, it paid this year, you know? It's right. really yeah. frustrating. Yeah. yeah, it's stupid. Yeah. So whatever. I, I don't I don't I don't think this is gonna be a big change, but uh, but there are some uh, there are some companies that have uh, added it already. In fact, okay, so I skipped over this. Let me let me talk about one of those companies briefly, is uh, Samsung. And if uh, you thought those guys put a lot of crap on their phones, let me tell you, people, you got to check out their PCs. Awesome. <laughs> and um, aside from that little problem, which is not a little problem, it's a big problem. Um, there is the uh, there is the other problem with Samsung and Microsoft, which is they have a secret little partnership going on. And um, I don't like this because it leaves out a lot of people. And what I mean by that is. To date, if you have the phone link app and you have an Android phone, you get a certain set of functionality. It was always better than what you got on an iPhone, but there's a third level of functionality. And that's if you have a Samsung flagship phone from a recent year, you get additional functionality around S21, such things. S21, S22, that kind of thing. Yep. Yeah. So you get like a remote app from the phone running in a window on your desktop. You get remote desktop, a remote display of the entire phone. There's some other stuff. So there's some stuff that you only get with Samsung. It's not that those phones are any more powerful or whatever than other phones. It's just, they have a partnership, right? And so right. this is, you know, you'll see Bing is, you know, the Bing app will be on a Samsung phone. There's, there's a little bit of, you know, quid pro quo going on here or whatever. There's something, it's a partnership, right? And 
Unfortunately, with their latest uh, devices, which look nice, you know, Galaxy Book 4, and there's a series of them. I'm sure over time they'll have laptops and 360s and whatever they have. But, um, you know, they're nice looking machines. They'll be loaded down with crapware. Um, they actually have additional features that are unique only on Samsung. And in this case, you have to have a Samsung laptop of this stripe. It has to be the newest one and one of the more recent year Samsung flagship phones. Hmm. And you get additional co-pilot functionality in Windows. <laughs> It's like, guys, what, what the, what are you doing? Is that like, machine even run Windows? Yes, it is a Windows laptop. Okay. Yep. yep. So I am not a fan of that kind of exclusivity type of thing. And so I'm just going to, I'm not going to read this whole thing, but um, uh, the way the integration as Samsung describes, it means um, you could let Copilot track down restaurant recommendations your friends have made in previous messages on your phone, search visitor reviews in the browser, send a message to someone else if they want to go to dinner that evening all from your PC through the phone. So in other words, you have co you have a Copilot app that no doubt is being bundled on the Samsung phone now, right? You have Copilot and Windows, obviously, Copilot key on the keyboard, and uh, these things are going to integrate, but only if it's all Samsung. And guys, I'm sorry, but like, come on, that's ridiculous. And uh, that's too bad. So that's where we're at there. <laughs> um, so there's your, how's your Copilot key now? <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, um, since we talked last Wednesday, there has been only one new build of the Windows Insider program, and it was just a bug fix build for the beta channel. So we talked last week about Dev Canary updates. I was expecting, I don't want to say hoping, but I was expecting to see something by now as we speak. Maybe on the next break, I'll take a peek and there'll be something else. But no, there's been nothing. Um, so this has been kind of quiet and I don't I really can't explain that too, too people much. People are still getting back to work. This is this is holiday hangover. Yeah, it could be, but they, but you know, they they did have those builds last week. I don't know. Yeah, but they they were pre. They were probably they were sitting pre there. Yeah, they were probably pre staged or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that could be. It's just the, yeah, just the, the drag there. So now you're actually doing that, feeling that two three week window. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I have my own hangover. I don't have to suffer from that from theirs too. But I guess I am. Well, you need both. <laughs> um. Uh, this I, I was going to make this a tip, but uh, I'll just throw it in the Windows 11 section because um, I don't I try not to provide too many updates to readers. I know can be a little, um, you know, a little bit of an interruption, but it's been two months since I shipped the first updates for the 23H2 in the Windows 11 field guide. So since then, I've actually added 160 pages to the book. Holy man. Uh, yeah. Three all new chapters. Um, it's, all, you know, over a uh, thousand and fifty pages long now. So. Uh, if you haven't looked at it or downloaded it or whatever recently, um, you know, grab a new copy because it's um, it's been, you know, it's getting there. Um, I'm I'm going after the Bible, I think is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, you know, we'll Bible's see. Not, why don't you aim for war and peace, man? Like, <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, baby steps. Um, <laughs> and obviously, if you haven't got it, please uh, think about it. Um, and then I, I haven't written about this yet, but uh, Zach over at Windows Central is reporting that there is code inside of uh, some insider builds that suggests that Microsoft is looking at adding AI writing assistance to Notepad. And I know the collective groan that this news will trigger because I, I literally groaned out loud when I read this. And I thought to myself, <laughs> you know, this is not the right place for this, right? People don't write in Notepad necessarily. I mean, I know Mary Jo might disagree with that statement, but, you know, I, I, if you're going to, if you're going to make, notepad acceptable as a writing tool i think it needs a few more basic features first you know frankly i mean there there is some form of spell checking that's available through the system that passes through etc cetera, etc cetera. but um this is the type of thing that needs to be in word i think there's a case to be made for microsoft replacing wordpad with some kind of a modern rich text editor and maybe their goal is to turn notepad into that thing if you think about how just uh, leave notepad alone no Come i couldn't on. agree more i 100 but if they're going to screw with it i i guess i would look at text edit on the mac and say you know it does rich edit and plain text and i mean they did kill wordpad was this all part of their greater notepad expansion strategy <laughs> <laughs> i bet i bet one of the problems with notepad was that architecturally it was very hard to uh, add AI to it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that, that could be, that could be. I mean, uh, Notepad has a lot of older code underneath it and a front, kind of a fun. Yeah, you know, I'd also end, say but... this feels very interny. Yeah. Like, it's like, you need something for the intern to do. So it's like, why don't you go mess with Notepad some more? It doesn't bother anybody. 
I just feel I you know what, but to see that I, I use notepad every single day. It bothers I know, me. I know. I don't I okay. I now I'm go, a, so, why don't you go mess with notepad. It only bothers Paul. Yeah, I never actually I never really thought about this, but I, I the, here's the problem I have with it. I don't I don't mind that features are available. What I mind is that I, I use a lot of different computers. So yeah. every time I run notepad for the first time, it pops up a little dialogue like says, Hey, we're doing this now. And I'm like, okay. And then I go into settings and I turn that thing off because I don't like that. I don't mind that it's available for everybody. And by that, I mean the session state saving. Yeah. Uh, I don't want it. That's not how I use this product. So it's another thing I have to do to make this thing more like it used to be, which is the way I want it. And it's just like yet another thing I have to configure. Like it, they're never going to save that setting. So all you're doing is annoying me mm -hmm. a lot because I review a lot of laptops. Okay. So there's that. Uh, and then on the Microsoft 365 front, we also got some, this is actually tremendous news. I am, this is one of the, I, this has made me so happy. Um, Microsoft sometime last year announced that, or did they announce this really? Or did we just find out? I, I'm not even sure they announced it. I think they might've announced it, but they, uh, it was revealed. It was let known or whatever that uh, they would be putting all of their hardware under the surface brand um, right. and getting rid of the Microsoft hardware brand. And unfortunately, that meant they actually discontinued virtually every single product that that part of the company was making, including some this thing that I use, which is a Microsoft a Microsoft Sculpt keyboard. I'm surprised to tell you, by the way, is over ten years old now. Um, that I, I have a on. friend who has six of oh. those in a closet. So when I used to have, I used to have three of them in a closet, and yeah. now I am done. To I have one here and one in this, Mexico, and I, there are no more. Yeah. So here's the thing. It's coming back. So uh, when Just Microsoft, in time, you're out of inventory. Yep. Well, I, I might be moving on to something else. We can talk about that too. Oh. But, uh, yeah. Cause there's some interesting um, options now for this kind of thing. Um, Microsoft, when they, I guess they had a call with all of their hardware partners to reveal that this was happening. And the folks from Incase uh, said, Hey, um, can we talk? Cause we might have a solution for this. And they were like, how about letting us do it? And they're going to do it. So in case later this year is going to re-release um, I can't say all of them, but I think most of the stuff that Microsoft discontinues is coming back through in case, including wow. this keyboard that I love so much. That's neat. Um, HP announced a keyboard very much like this at uh, CES. They mm -hmm. also, I, I, I'm, I don't really use this kind of thing, but they also announced like a vertical mouse, if that makes sense. I don't know if you ever yeah. use this thing like that. I'd say if you've ever, I, folks that are dealing with repetitive strain, uh, vertical mm -hmm. mouse is really good for that. Yeah. And they got, you see angle of the wrist. They got it exactly right. Um, yeah. And there's also a Logitech option um, that can be angled this way because most of these kind of ergonomic keyboards either don't angle or angle in the back, which is exactly wrong. You don't want to do mm -hmm. that to your wrist. You want yeah. your right you wrist to kind of sit as flat as possible down, on top yeah. of it. Yeah. So this thing is, I think, has saved my writing career. And um, protect your wrists um, anyway. Yep. So, yeah. I mean, so that's I. So that's fantastic. Anyway, anyway, my, so that, my that's, favorite mouse of that whole lineage when we were messing around with it was the rollerball mouse. Where you just really? put your so hand I, I down. Could, well, because I did the original triple screen rig way before Windows uh, knew what to do. So with you, it. Needed to, you needed to spin it up like no an asteroid machine to get that thing man. over. Yeah. yeah. It's like, I got 10 feet to go. I got to keep spinning that so ball. Me, what do you call it? Uh, what's that effect? It's a, um, it, it kind of increase or the the friction decreases over time or something. What do you call it? Like, it's kind yeah. of like a, like a speed up effect or whatever. I could never get used to that. Um, I tried so hard. There was a, I think it was actually Logitech, but. There was a red, it had a red ball that was the yeah, size of a one. pool cue. Humongous. Yeah. Loved it. And I could never get loved used to it. it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. I yeah, would I touch should, it. And I the, should the, get the curse one. would be like, <laughs> it would just yeah. like take off. Yeah. It definitely um, has, a, has a groove to it. But it yeah, also, yeah, yeah. it's another one That's of those, funny. anything to keep your wrist from being flat down, to yes. turn it on its side. Yeah. So what I use is a, the sculpt mouse, which looks like a softball. Yeah. But I also use a gel. sits on it very nicely. Yeah, but with, especially if you have a gel, I, I just wrist replaced pad. mine, a gel wrist pad. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can get a really nice Belkin uh, gel wrist pad on Amazon for eight bucks, which yeah, I know is not I expensive. Just, I just did. <laughs> it's fantastic. So, uh, yeah, that ergonomics is super important. A lot mm -hmm. of the stuff Microsoft has come up with over the years has been almost maliciously non-ergonomic. So <laughs> um, I, I like their Surface branded ergonomic keyboard is terrible. Um, mm -hmm. But I, this thing I love. I love the Sculpt keyboard so much. But I'm glad that uh, in case is gonna. Yeah, yeah, it, I, it's so wonderful. I think that's great. I, yeah. Yep, these are great products. So that's yeah. really nice. Keep them alive, and they're apparent what there's stuff that was never released, right? Uh, yeah, that's oh sure. I should have mentioned. I'm sorry. Yeah, so Microsoft had some products in development that they hadn't released, and and in case is going to release those too. So wow. I, that's that's so they you really did buy it lock, stock, and barrel. Yeah, and they took presumably the they can manufacture more efficiently than Microsoft ever could. Yeah, so. I think so. Man, God, they're yeah. yeah. 
they're more in that space. Yeah. I think of in case as being uh, kind of like a backpack company. I've had at least one yeah. in case like laptop backpack, but I think they, they I think they do the whole stuff. peripheral thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're all over the place. But it, you know, it brings up this interesting question is like, you realize there was a great team at working at Microsoft designing stuff to a company that largely didn't value it. I, right. Which is crazy. I mean, the uh, Panos Panay and I think others on the service team came up out of that group yeah. and um, I, they did some good work. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. So when we think about uh, <laughs> what, what kind of products could I compare this to? So Windows RT is a great example of this. It's something mm -hmm. that looks like that thing it says it is, but it isn't that thing, right? <laughs> In other words, what do you call a version of Windows that looks like Windows, quacks like Windows, walks like Windows, but doesn't run Windows apps? We call it Windows RT. So nice. what do you call a version of Microsoft Teams that uh, looks like Teams and can't join Teams meetings or right. chat with Teams? We call it Microsoft Teams because Microsoft get, gets branding horribly wrong, but what mm -hmm. they're referring to is the free version that's in Windows 11, right? It's of which Teams Peren free. <laughs> right. But it, but if you look in your start menu, by the way, and you type in Microsoft Teams, you will discover that that product is identified as Teams. And the one you installed from the web because you need it for work is called Microsoft Teams Worker School. Worker School, yeah. Which is, come on, I, yeah. like, guys. So here's the thing. On mobile, Microsoft has one Teams app. You can switch yeah. between consumer and work, and there you go. Solved problem. I, when Microsoft replaced Skype with Teams. I made the Which argument they that they didn't really do. They just thank left you. Skype. They hanging left it hanging there. because that's what they do. Yeah. You know, that's what they do. Um, the baseline to me for that would would have been like Teams works. It integrates. You know, like it just works. It's Teams. That would be kind of thing I'd be looking for. This was like three and a half years ago. It was almost four years ago. Like, I, so I, they're I, I, okay. The re, this is the build up to Microsoft is apparently in the process of allowing people on the free version to teams to seamlessly join teams meetings with people in work or school. Right. Wow. Like, like the, 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 the very basic functionality we sort of assumed would be would there been, from the beginning. It yep. would have been incredibly valuable in 2020. And maybe would have triggered a shift to that app. Yeah. You know, frankly, yeah. I mean, for me, like I, even when I was at a company, I mean, I honestly didn't really need the full teams app. Mm -hmm. I just needed, I needed to join meetings and have yeah. chats, you know? Hey, look, I still um, pay for Zoom because if you're not already using Teams, you don't want to use Teams. I know. So then I have to call Although, you on Zoom. You'll, I, 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 in, uh, Matt, Matt, uh, just to be fair, I guess, um, I ripped on Teams for, I don't know, three years straight because mm -hmm. it deserved it, right? It was horrible. Like every, there was five days in a work week, every week, at least three of those days, it mis, it mis or misconfigured my uh, audio and video devices. Right even though nothing changed, right? That made me insane for a long time. Um, Zoom has done a wonderful job of that. Yep. Um, but, uh, but, Zoom, but they're now on the Dr. O path too. Oh my God. Are they? Oh my yeah. God. It's like Brad and I connect every morning. It's a seven minute, 21 step process. Yeah. And it's it, like, it guys. just keeps chucking stuff at you. It's yeah, like, this what a platform, is, I swear. This is what you do. What are you yeah. doing? You, <laughs> it, I, yeah, I don't, I don't understand what's happening there, yeah. but. Yeah, I'd love yeah, to use something I, that, hey, I don't have to install. It's built hey, in. Nice. Somebody right? made their VP making the video chat product successful. That person's now moved on and a new person wants to make their VP. So <laughs> by golly. In the spirit of, I use a lot of computers and every week almost, I'm, I'm bringing up a new computer of some kind. It might be a computer I already had that I've reset for whatever reason. And I talked about how I don't like to have to reconfigure things over and over again. Um, Richard, you will, you must have experienced everyone, I, anyone who uses Zoom will have, when you first sign into Zoom, mm -hmm. the first time on a new device, yeah, I, I'm not going to get the wording exactly right, but it says, Hey, um, we can, can, we can integrate with your Google, blah, 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 whatever. Do you want to set that up? And I'm like, yeah, cause I signed in with Google. I'm like, yep. I have never gotten it to work. Not once. <laughs> I, 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 it has never worked. I've always just backed out of that wizard. I've never gotten through it. Yeah. I, I can't get it to integrate, even though. I mean, when I click on the link to start this show, it's in Google Calendar. Like, it, no, I sign in with Google. Yep, that does not. Not work. a thing. No, that's not, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Oh my well, god! The, and you wonder if it isn't a battle between Google and Zoom too, right? Like that they're no, sabotaging be, yeah. each other. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. I, I like the notion the that Google that. is fighting with some other company right now. So that's yeah. that would be good for me. Well, it's just a simple sabotage process, <laughs> right? and it's you know it's very uh, old old Gatesy and Microsoft too. It's like yeah. They, the software ain't done till Lotus won't run. You right, know right, that. right, right, right. Hey, you know that seamless sign-on thing we did? It's everyone but Zoom. Yeah, yeah they're the new Lotus. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs>
That's what, maybe I don't, that could be. Well, I can sign into it with Google. That's not a problem. It's the you can't actually get the calendar. I don't know what they call it. There's a I could look it up, I guess. But it's yeah. there's some name for this, and it's like, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> it's like I don't know. I can't. Not I'm thing. not gonna be able to find it out. But it's it's a it, it, the, for it, maybe. You have, I mean, I, I semi obviously you have to sign it with a Google account to see it. I guess so. That's how I do sign into Zoom. So I see it every single computer and every time I'm like, no, I, I stopped doing it. But yeah, you stopped I, trying. I bet 17 times in a row or something. I, I was like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, no, I'm like, I'm going to get it. there I'm, today. Today's I'm, the day. It's like for, nine o'clock in the morning. I got this. And I'm like, <laughs> and my soul like, is yeah. gone by 1130. Yep. yep. I'm like, I get up. I can't write today. Yeah. No, it's unbelievable. <laughs> that sucks. And then it's call of duty for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> well, not anymore. It isn't, but, <laughs> um, but yes, it's yeah something else. That's for sure. It's these days it's black Mesa, which is a, there you go. Fantastic. Love, love it. So good. Fantastic. Wait a minute. Is yeah. it based on uh, uh it is a it's a remake of the oh, original Half Life yeah. that was made oh, with cool. Valve's blessing by yeah, we, talked it, we talked about it a few oh, shows. I remember yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. so great. Yeah. So this thing on on a on a, a core ultra laptop runs full res ultra graphics it's beautiful. It's beautiful. By the way, speaking of which, one of the NVIDIA demos I didn't mention was NVIDIA has an uh, an optimizer tool for older games where you can bring them up to 4K and special, I mean, all yeah. this stuff. And their, their demo is Half-Life 2. And mm. yikes. That yeah, game, like to me, already looks great. But then you put it through this thing and you got to go look this up on YouTube or whatever. It's uh, Half-Life 2, you know, and I think it's called GeForce Optimizer or something like that. It's right. awesome. Oh, I cannot wait because then I got to get it. And that this now you're playing more old games. Like it's, <laughs> you know what? Who cares? Like, yeah, it's yeah. Excellent. It's, there's so much. Hey, these games said, are so much better. Yeah, and playing and it's good nostalgia games, no question. But she, the problem is you get on a Half Life Two, and then you realize Book Three is never going to exist, and then you're sad all <laughs> over again. So what you got to do is play Half Life Two and just stop. Don't yeah. don't play the episodes. It's not. Yeah. It just will break your heart. Although it I guess you could play Alex. I guess and uh, or like what yeah. is it? Alex. Yeah. Yeah, Alex. Definitely. You could. Uh, Good look yeah, at that. It's soul wrenching. No two ways about yeah, it. I know. Well, I'm hope, but I'm hoping all of this interest now. They did the 25th, I think, or 20th anniversary, whatever mm -hmm. it was, of the original Half Life, which is great, mm -hmm. and it was a documentary, which is beautiful. And uh, now this Half Life Two thing is being redone through uh, Nvidia. I mean, I, 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 Valve, are you getting the message here? Like people, yeah. people, people care. They people see love the universe of Black Mesa and Aperture Science and that yes. whole. There is a larger story map that was going on there that never yep. got to manifest itself. That would be fun yeah, to play. Yeah, exactly. George R. R. Martin can suck it. <laughs> <laughs> this was, yeah, this, this, I, I you could play Half-Life 2 right now. Pick your mm. system. Doesn't matter how good it looks. It's going to look awesome on whatever system. And wonder to yourself, how did they never make a movie out of this? And yes. these days it would be a 10 part multi-season yeah, HBO slash whatever well, that, TV that, series. The crafting of the oh, open of Half Life Two, which so makes you good. feel like you're just playing another, yep, uh, scrolling corridor shooter, and then you go out the door yes. into the dystopia. And the, yeah, the things flying around the, and the, and the towers in the background. That and perfect rendering of old school Soviet brutalism. Yes, oppressive it's like this Eastern Europe. Yep, beautiful. It's, um, it's just stunning, it's and, you, and you're literally a gape. And then a policeman beats the crap out of you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you run, yeah, exactly. You run through a house. And, yeah, I know. It's it's the best. I have probably played that first. It's not really a level, but that first level of Half-Life 2, like a hundred times. Yeah. It's and just so. Especially as a storyteller, just to real, like when you were yes. playing it, you were too busy playing it. But now as a storyteller, you go back and watch it. It's like. Oh, no. I, oh, it's fascinating. You can just leave it. I got there, your but, Wolfenstein right here. Yeah, right? Exactly. Boom. <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's a slightly different kind of game. Um, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. That's so good. So good. And then, uh, you know, just because you have to, just because, you know, you have to, you know, Apple, I, I, the one thing I, I vaguely appreciate about them is how much, how much kind of passive aggressive vitriol they have for the rest of the industry <laughs> hmm. decided what? on the opening day of CES. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. A, 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 an industry wide event. They do not participate in to announce <laughs> that Apple vision Pro pro will be coming out on uh, February 2nd in the United States. And uh, pre-orders are starting in about nine days. Um, you know, thirty-five hundred bucks. It's not for everybody. Um, the question is: Is it for anybody? Yeah, that is the question. We're going to find out. You're my man. I, you know, I, I got tired of cheesing and people's gruel, so I'll let you do it. Show well, me the killer app. 
Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, it could happen, right? No. I just mostly, and uh, I think it it's could, just me but personally, I, but I don't. Th I think I'm not alone. I just don't want. When to you talk about the original killer app of the smartphone, go all the way back. The, yeah. What was the thing that said you must have this? Like what was it? It, it was an iHeart voicemail. Safari, Visual yeah. voicemail. Safari. Well, that's just a browser. No, no. Well, I that's tell a killer it's, app. No, was it? you well, have an internet device wasn't? in your pocket. You could surf the net with. That's pretty good. I, that sounds. It familiar. was Google Maps. Oh, well, Google Maps. That okay. was good too. There were a lot of things, you know. Having yeah, your, but that was the one that just changed everything. Like the your gar, you were paying several hundred dollars for a separate device. I thought it was, was the bad. Finding Nemo, Nemo wallpaper. Am I? Yeah, yeah. There were a lot of things. The iPhone was pretty yeah, much yeah. a killer app all, all on yeah, its own. Yeah. They had that uh, with that. Uh, they had that. Um, God, I'm, I'm forgetting the word. The same effect with the ball I was talking about, where you scroll down to the bottom and bounce a little bit, like it yeah, was an acceleration little, effect. Yeah, skew more. I think effects. they called it rubber banding or something, but it was a yeah, uh, yeah like an acceleration effect, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. But I just, yeah. We got, I mean, now I have so a, you could have an Apple it. Watch. No, you take it for granted. That's how good it is. Safari yeah. let you on a little device, and it was really little. Yeah. yeah Look yeah, at a yeah. normal web page and, right. and double and tap and it, and it would zoom, it yep. would scale. It would fit, it would, the column would fit the. That yeah. was, yeah. and now remember, they didn't have an app store for another six months or something. So, so you didn't have a, a year. Long, you yeah. didn't have, or a year. You didn't have Waze or Google Maps, but you did have Safari. And that meant you could use Waze and Google Maps and other things. And, yeah, it was. Oh, well, I think Google, Google Maps was built in. That was an app. Was they, it yeah. built in? in the yeah, right. First oh, okay. Oh, back then they were lovey dovey. Well, yeah, yeah they didn't you know? have Apple Maps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, and wait, well, and they didn't have Google later. making their own phone yet either. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you think that that's what's going to do it as a killer app? Because my objection oh, is more to the form factor. I think this is you, like AI. I don't you think there's going to be. You'll forget won't the form one. factor the moment it's good enough. I think there's going to be a bunch. I think it's we're looking at more small things. I think just like AI, I don't think there's one thing, you know. No, no, and, and one thing's not enough. But there has to be something yeah. that makes you forget social norms, right. that makes you forget the cost. <laughs> right. That's just like this forget is such an nausea. advantage. I do not care. Well, and that's because I remember I had early smartphones well before the iPhone. Right, and, and they the were folks painful. Would, yeah. And some of you know, they have moments of good where someone say, "Can I play with that?" And they play with it. Well, holy cow! Like this is amazing. I right? was. Like, um, I was on a plane. I was running NT4, so whatever you know, can go back in time, however mm. long ago this was, and uh, on a laptop, on a laptop, and I was this playing. Is where, this is where your self-loathing comes from, right? This right. is software accelerated, <laughs> software accel or software rendering Quake, yeah. your first Quake game, so '97 ish, something like that. Mm. And this woman <laughs> across the aisle, she leans into me and she goes, "Is that virtual reality?" Mm. And I was like, oh. sort of, <laughs> sort of. Yeah. It's a virtual something. Yeah. Also, my battery just died. Uh, <laughs> thanks for yeah. interrupting me. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. Anyway, I mean, I, I'm glad they're launching. It's Apple. You can't not. You can't ignore. Yeah, it. you it's have impossible. to. You have to wonder yeah, because yeah. It's, yeah, that's right. And then I and I own a Hololens, and I drained its battery a couple of times over playing with it, and then I put it down. And, and I had to pick it, it back up again. Yeah, that's what happens. And, and I had a, a, you know, even had the the Google Glass. There are less and, uh, expensive regrets to have, yeah. um, you know. Yeah, I just, no. no this I'm, is going to be an interesting I'm, test you know, of their influence, to, though. I, it really is. I want you to help me because it's 3500 bucks. It is yeah, very yep. likely because it's a highly constrained in manufacturing capacity that if you don't order it, a week from Friday, which is when the order is going to get 5 one a.m. You're not going to get yeah. one for a while. No, I, I also think that cooks shorten the production a lot for a reason. It doesn't think he's going to sell many. Or they're yeah. hard to make. I mean, this thing is pretty. Here, here's the thing. So here, here's the so thing. My easier question, excuse. I need you yeah. to help me. Should I buy one? Yeah, you should. You should. So Absolutely, we don't have to. You, Leo, I would argue you have to. <laughs> yeah. And I, if I, not and the, you, then who? No, I really think you have to. And And look. If if the net result is you were like, hey, look, I feel like I was right. You know, this thing is yeah. at least you have that oh, no. to offer the world. Please, but, we want the thing is we want an I told you so so bad. I don't like, think this is this. Will, Apple will let you return this. No, no, geez, okay. no, no, you're keeping this one. Oh no, look, it's gonna look beautiful. On the other hand, you could the, uh, sign it and eBay you, right? I could sign right it there. and eBay it. You're right. If it's there if it's go. in enough demand. I could probably no, but get here's the, most but of here's the thing. Everyone knows this, but you kind of have to remind yourself about this kind of stuff because Apple has such a tremendous grip on its consumer base that people is like dying to throw money at them, you know. And I, but I think their biggest success ever 
has been their um, ability to get developers on board with what at the time was the crappiest development environment imaginable. And yet they were creating the best apps on the earth. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but that, that, was is, against, uh, that was against their will. We had jailbroken the phone, yep. so they released the internal apps. But they, I, that stuff was horrible. Yes. <laughs> and like, and but, they were so successful with that. And now it's years later and there's a whole generation of developers who are just in that ecosystem. They know Xcode, they know Swift, they know these um, APIs and frameworks and we'll see. But I, 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 I don't think you can discount it. I mean, it, it, I don't mean to say it, it is absolutely going to succeed, but if anyone can make this fly. This is the best shot. And I the think fact that the things leak so far is concerning. Yeah. yeah. Right. If a great game developer had, or a great app developer has made something amazing for the Vision Pro, I think we would have heard. There are going to be a lot of um, uh, spatial markdown apps, which I think are going to be not exciting in the slightest. Um, I think you know there's going to be there's going to be crap. <laughs> but, oh yeah. But uh, we'll see. I don't know. I, I look. They brought games to the iPhone. Um, I should say console, PC, Call of Duty games. It's not an awesome experience, but you know these Resident Evil games that you can yeah. play now. If they can do that on an iPhone, yeah, I realize you would vomit within ten seconds, seconds. On, a, yeah. on an AR, a VR headset. But yeah, I don't know. I I just don't think you can discount it. No, I think it's it, yeah, but it's, it's not that hard to write software to make it seizure inducing, right? Like <laughs> yeah. the trick, right? No, right. the trick's going to be not doing that. Well, maybe getting, that's the killer app: uh, non seizure inducing yeah. uh, interactive yeah, experiences. I'm, I'm right. looking for a mist for VR. Yeah, yeah there you right? go. Yeah, right. A 2024 20, miss. We actually walk around in real time, and you know, well, exactly. Yeah, so exactly slow that. moving, and the hardware is yeah. there. I mean, the, the, the hardware is extremely sophisticated. Yeah. Uh, right. It's just a question of whether. Okay, now, now well, I'm thinking. I yeah. probably is this an orphan? Is one. this? Yeah, yeah. I think I really think you do. I, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't want. You, I think you're right. I, I logically, I listen to your argument against him. Like, yeah, no, I, he's right. I mean, but. The little asterisk is always Apple, and and part of that asterisk isn't like they're such a high quality company. I don't mean that. They just have done a tremendous job of pied pipering these communities of both users and developers to a degree that no other company has ever done, and I don't think ever will. I mean, I, they're uniquely successful like that. And they have a history. I mean, they did it with the iPod, and yeah. they did it with the iPhone. Now you could argue the iPad. While it well, was it's, a been much it's been reduced expectations since then. The iPad, yeah. not as much. The Apple Watch, absolutely not as much. Again, really? well, I think that's a success. I see that everywhere. Everybody yeah, but only on the fifth iteration. Yeah, and well, success, is, success but, but, in what way, though? Like, what, yeah. like, I, the, 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 the watch, as he signs into his Pixel Watch, the, the, the watch has, <laughs> I use this, I, well, I use this like I use an Apple Watch, which is like a glorified Fitbit, you know? Right. That was my primary thing. I was more irritated than excited when something would happen like a, start playing uh, something on your Apple TV and then like a little playback control appears and you watch like, no, <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> I already you have three ways to control I this. I can't get in my car like, with a watch. There you go. Yeah, but yet you have to have a certain kind of car. You do. You know, There's a very now. limited I mean, number of kinds of cars, yep. but my car, I can. In fact, I was yep. shocked because yep. I didn't have my phone and I walked next to the car and I went, hello. Oh, so uh, what was the feature? Uh, no, 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 no. You have a Mustang, right? Still the new one? No, this is uh, no. the new uh, BMW i5 has oh, BMW I'm sorry. Okay, so this key, Apple car key. There is some unique stuff coming to the Mustang and I want to say a Lincoln of some kind. But I thought it was from Google. Never mind. It's some it's something like what you're describing like the ability to I'm just saying that the watch has become smart more it, yeah. useful to the point where I don't leave home without it now. Yeah. Sure. So but it's you're all, right. but it's also it took, not but it, it but it's not lot. necessary. It, like no, we're on the I, ninth I think the thing with the iPhone is yeah. the iPhone uh made smartphones necessary to the point and not just necessary, but more necessary than anything else, right? For a huge portion of the population worldwide. That's their device. They don't even use a computer. This is it. No, they don't own a computer or whatever. You know, these other things are sort of peripheral to that, right? Like an iPad or a uh, a Mac, even a watch, Apple TV, whatever. These things are sort of, um, you know, they're, they're ecos. They exist because you have an iPhone almost, right? I mean, uh, but by the way, there's no reason that this headset thing couldn't be, you know, successful within that context. I mean, you obviously have to have an iPhone. Or you wouldn't be getting this thing, right? Yeah. I don't know. We'll you, you know, you don't have to have an iPhone to have the Vision Pro, although... I don't well, know. How do you be partially but, in that but ecosystem? You, but yeah. yeah, right. You, this, yeah. We're not going to see a lot of non-iPhone owning... Um, 
Well, and, and believe me, when I when, I, <laughs> when it, this was approaching, yeah. it's like if I'm buying this, I'm going all the way in. Right. Yeah, I'm right. getting a Mac and I'm yep. getting a phone, and it's like you you either go in the garden or you don't. <laughs> right, and and, uh, and the answer was. Don't. And then you hear that <laughs> lock sound behind you, and you're like, "What just happened?" Welcome, Got him. You, uh, you could check yeah. in, but you can't check out. <laughs> oh, You'll never like, leave. At least it's warm, and the, the food's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is anyway. a very nice warm I, we'll bath. See. We'll see. Leo, I don't. I don't see how you can avoid it. Frankly, I mean, yeah. I, just to be objective job. about it, and yeah, yeah. we're we're money. So I can tight. I can easily avoid it and will. And I'm happy because I don't really want to spend 200 bucks on something I know I'm never going to use. But, but it's true. I, I, you know, I can't really comment on it if I, if I haven't used it. Yeah. You know, two of the four Mac Break Weekly hosts are getting it. Uh, Jason Snell okay. will get one. Uh, and uh, Alex. Do you ever get, get to one. be in the presence of these people? Could yeah, you? Yeah, I could go um, over to yeah. either one's yeah. house. So they're because, around. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. that would help. A little. I think seeing it in person would be important at least. Yeah. I, I declared I wasn't going to get it, but, but, but. Yeah, but if if it if there's any, I don't mean to be the, I, a part of the trigger that reverses that decision. No, but I, I, Richard I, is actually. I blame Richard okay. because he <laughs> okay. said, and I think he might be right. If there is a killer app, that will be yep. enough. That and, will be, be. You just got to anchor it on something, and you can't. I, I can't judge I, a killer app until yeah. I say, "Oh, it's a killer app." You know, I have to use yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. No, it's when you can't put it down, right? Like yeah, that's the whole thing. What happened with smartphones is one day somebody wanted to play with it and I couldn't get it back from them. Right? There's going like, to be a oh, sad day where my wife and I and your wife and your, you are going to be sitting on the couch. All four of us gonna have with spooky in headsets. Dogs. Yeah. There's in no the screen couch. in the room. Yeah. We've got immersive audio. We've got immersive video. Yeah. And we're watching whatever it is, the it's new season of uh, yeah. The Sopranos or whatever. And yeah, yeah that's the way it's going to be. We're going to be like these. We're going to be like in the Matrix, you know. I don't, I don't, and I don't know. Is it that's bad? a bad I don't, what, thing? I, yeah, but we're almost bad. there already. I mean, how many times do you go to dinner and everybody's looking at their phone? Or I know. I mean, well, but okay, but this doesn't have to be exclusive, right? I mean, there could be. We could do an MST thing where, like, you guys are actually in the front row facing me while we're watching the thing and we're interacting. That could happen. Yeah, we don't even have to be in the same room. Like, you could be on the yeah. other side of the country. We could be doing this in real time. It's a possibility. I'm not saying it's. I'm not. I'm just, There's some real issues with. These headsets, movement, for instance, yeah. is a problem because you, you, right. even though these have external cameras, so in theory you could walk around. Apple's been pretty clear. No, no, no you're not going to be leaving the area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, don't walk out the front door. Yeah, yeah. battery life is limited, uh, yep. you, but although they have interchangeable batteries right. and you can even plug it in. Um, mm -hmm. I and the, you know, there's just this issue of strapping something onto your head as you get sweaty. So if you guys, if anyone wears a CPAP and you were looking for more stuff to stick on your yeah, face, you this go. is going to be a great solution. Are, are you not you know? feeling claustrophobic enough yet? It's yeah, a exactly. CPAP Probably for, for the you. daytime, you know? Yeah, yeah that's, right. that's hey, right. Don your daytime CPAP so you can get some work done. And that's I really listen, what's something I, that really is weird. Microsoft pushed this, I think, failing at it. And, and now Apple's pushing sure. productivity. But again, but, but Apple has an audience that is engaged and like aggressively engaged yeah. and, and um, you know, Holland saw some level of success in what we kind of think of as vertical and niche markets or whatever. Um, but you know, the nature of that world is it's not, it's not, you know, it's not exciting. I mean, it's the technology is interesting, obviously, but you know, the, you've got a Skype call back in the day with a little picture and picture thing with the guy saying, don't cut the red wire, cut the blue wire, you know, mm -hmm. useful. Absolutely. Um, but it not, you know, it's not exciting. Like it's, I don't know. I think if anyone can do it, it's Apple. That's yeah. It. Yeah. I'm not convinced, but you're right. If anybody, if they do pull it off, I'm okay with the, I told you so like legit, I'm not feeling blindsided. It's not yeah, even, even I, 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 I mean, how often do we get um, a brand new category? Uh, yeah, that's exciting. Not very often actually. <laughs> yeah. That's exciting. I if think, it is. I, well, I, it's it's, not, it also it's not, fits the Apple model. They're not the first by any stretch of the imagination. No. Yeah. But yeah, maybe yeah, yeah. they've got it CES nailed. Was loaded with VR. I don't. And I AR would not. I would not use this as an "I told you so" moment. I would, if this thing were to fail, I would just say, "Yeah, that was one of the outcomes." I mean, they went for it and they failed. Whatever. So right. yeah, Apple also made the Newton. Right. Yes. Right. Although, yeah, I mean, I guess you could make the argument: is this a different company? Really? You know? Yeah. This is mm. well. It, it, this is you know. You want to talk about the larger context on there? It's like, is this Tim Cook's folly? finally because he's kind yeah. of been firing all cylinders he immediately did the things that that 
uh, Jobs didn't want him to do when he got charged. He made the <laughs> he made the iPad right. Mini and all that stuff that Jobs right. was blind to. Yeah, bigger iPhones, right, smaller was iPads, right a lot. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> But this one, he seems like he forced through against the will of well, someone. The watch was kind of his thing, sort of. Yeah, and, and uh, TV too. He hammered his yeah. way through that, and that's one of the things is you know we and we often forget this part about Apple. They are persistent. You know, yeah. they believe yeah. they, the original iPod was not that good. One would argue that the fundamental thing that transformed the iPod was the ninety-nine cent song. I was going to say Jobs Windows compatibility in the USB. Deal, it was yeah, probably, and then that too when iTunes know. appeared on the on the yeah. on the Windows. Yeah, you know. But they don't give up. They right. made a lot of versions of Apple well, TV before it became good. They made a lot yeah. of versions and, and of the watch investment, before it The investment good. they would have made into this is exponentially bigger than any uh, of the investments they made for those oh, previous yeah, We products. were for speculating sure. about this. And uh, I think it's probably been at least seven or eight years they've been working on this. Sure. Mm -hmm. And you got to figure they're spending $10 billion a year. I mean, and it's, I yeah. mean uh, Meta was, right? But so the good news is five to um, they, they just don't they know how have, they make they a V2 it. with that much. They, they have that cash. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah they can afford as, it. As a percentage it. of yeah. the size yeah. of the company, that's yeah. probably less than they spent making the yeah. iPhone. The iPhone and in fact, iPhone only whatever. Apple could do it, frankly. I mean, there are yeah. very few companies. Microsoft might be one of them, but very few companies that could make this kind of commitment. Right. Anyhow. Anyhow. This is more time than I meant to spend on Apple, but I, I yeah, think yeah. they're Let's going to. Let's take a break because uh, uh, next we're going to spend way more time than it deserves on AI. So, <laughs> and that's, you know, that's what we do here. Uh, thank God Activision Blizzard's over. Our is, it, is it though? Is it? Is it really? Come back anytime. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about our sponsor, the great folks at Cashfly, who bring you this show, really literally bring you this show. They're our content delivery Network For over 20 years, Cashfly has held a track record for high-performing, ultra-reliable content delivery. Organizations, and I'm going to include us in this, choose Cashfly for scalability, reliability, and unrivaled performance. And they are second to none. We are so happy with them. With Cashfly, you get ultra-low latency video streaming, which lets you deliver video to over a million concurrent customers. Wow. Oh, if you're a gaming company, lightning fast gaming, downloads are faster, but also zero lag glitches, outages. All of this because you're moving your content closer to your customer, right? It's on the edge with Cashfly. Mobile content optimization is great for websites. Automatic and simple image optimization so your site loads faster on any device. We love the billing. You know, we're, and I bet you are too, of kind of spiky in our usage. So they gave us flexible month-to-month -month billing for as long as we needed to figure out, well, how, you know, how is this going to work out? And then once we knew, we got discounts for fixed terms. So that's great. You just basically you design your own contract when you switch to Cashfly. Oh, and I got to tell you, with Cashfly's elite managed packages, you get the VIP treatment. Your dedicated account manager will be with you from day one, assuring smooth implementation, reliable twenty four seven support when you need it, delivering rich media content up to one hundred fifty nine percent faster than other major CDNs. Cashfly the world's fastest CDN and our CDN. We're so happy to be with them. Jump start your journey with Cashfly. Get a complimentary first month or give it a whirl with a free five terabyte account. Just go to cashfly.com slash twit. Cashfly.com slash twit. Thank you, Cashfly, from the bottom of my heart. Uh, on we go. Let's talk AI, gentlemen. <laughs> I sense a certain lack of enthusiasm. No, I like topic. AI. I like AI. I'm an AI guy. <laughs> you know, I'm, a, now I'm an accelerationist. I'm the one who says, I, give him everything. I would Don't like people copyright. to appreciate the AI-generated image I made a, of Sam Altman as the Fonz jumping over a shark. <laughs> <laughs> um, very that was your prompt, huh? Yeah, yep. let, me, let me pull it up here. That's fantastic. <laughs> um. um <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I was pretty happy with that, yes. um, which is what's going to happen with AI, really, when you think about it. Um, we're going to be so proud of things we didn't actually make. There you <laughs> go. It's in okay. A, in a nutshell. You, you, know, you wrote nutshell. the prompt. I wrote the prompt. My God. It's like, it's like saying, hey, honey, I'd like to have lobster for dinner and then being proud because we had lobster. Right. <laughs> you know, when she when she went out and bought it and made it, and you know. Yeah. What'd I, you make for dinner? Reservation. I mean, I prompted you. I was <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty much all we're good for, prompting. Yeah, but who has anyway. ever had a Sam Altman jumping over a shark before? Thank you. 
It's right. an original yeah. idea. Yeah, I can't get I thought, it up. I thought so it was, you'll just have was, to. Uh, you'll just have to imagine be, it. <laughs> How many yeah. times well, have I said my, that it's, before? It's on my. It's on my site. Hey, go yeah. go to go to Paul's site. For some reason, I'm not. I'm site. not getting my it's screen okay. up on the screen. <laughs> I'm I'm perhaps too proud of it. Anyway, um, <laughs> Open uh, Open AI responded to the New York Times lawsuit with a uh, blog post on their site. Um, I originally. <laughs> started just to cover it as a straight up news story. And then I read the quote that I quoted and I was like, Oh my God, what? are you kidding me? And like, and then I started, then I scanned the thing again and I was like, Oh my God, these guys are out. They're out to lunch. <laughs> so I'm not going to beat this one to death. Um, I wrote an article about it. Um, it's, <laughs> I actually, I, 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 there's absolutely a debate to be had here about how, uh, whether this thing is breaks the law, bad, whatever I, we can debate this, but, their response is out to lunch. And mm -hmm. um, I, I will just, I, I, I will leave it on a happy note and just say this at the end of this uh, post, they actually extended an olive branch and said, look, we, we want to work with the New York times. We want them, you know, we want them to be a good partner. And, and, you know, I, I do think that was both sides eventual goal here I, or real goal here. Right. And that, yeah, I thought this was a money play and they just didn't want to spend a lot on lawyers. Yeah. So I think I, my, I still feel the same way that th the way this ends is, some form of settlement. Um, I, I do think it's telling that OpenAI made the argument that they've had discussions with dozens of news organizations, but they could only cite four of them and mm. none of them will announce what they're being paid right. <laughs> for their content being licensed. Right. And uh, there are all kinds of reasons why that might be the case, but anyway, um, I, I, there are concerns here, um, but I have a bigger concern that I live in the state of Pennsylvania and my pr proud Commonwealth just became the first U S state to adopt uh, GPT Enterprise for use oh. in state operations. Yes. So um, I moved uh, twice last year. I hope I don't have to move again, um, but I'm a little, <laughs> it's a little upsetting. Um, they're starting with uh, kind of, uh, well, actually, I mean, their use of, uh, their use of uh, uh, generative AI is, is right. doesn't sound horrible, honestly. And, uh, <laughs> and, and they do make the point, um, this, none of the data or input that we make is going to uh, inform chat GPT or train it or whatever. Right. Uh, or any future let's products. Face it, like everything you need to find is on their website. You just can't actually find it. And so, <laughs> you know, putting a chat yes. interface onto it so they can lead you to self-service. Well, it's, it's even, it's, it's that or you sit on hold for days. Well, they're, so they're actually doing it for their own employees. And so I, I have to say some of this sounds pretty good to me. So for example, mm -hmm. they're going to help uh, use it to help them create and edit copy. Like, okay, make outdated policies more accessible, right? Okay. That's pretty good. So rewriting um, the language on them. Yeah. Um, address duplication and conflicting guidance and hundreds of thousands of pages mm -hmm. of employee policies. Help man, uh, help employees generate code. I don't know what that means. HR is a good um, place actually for, uh, yeah, uh, like uh, it's yeah. like, okay. I mean, I'm not, yeah. Okay. Put your employee I mean, handbook into, into an AI expert. And cause Lisa, I mean, and, we get a lot of questions about our handbook. It's like, well, I know it's hard to read it all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, okay. Um, <laughs> Sometime I, okay. you know, I was like, okay, I think you're we'll, right. We'll... Sam Altman has jumped the shark, ladies and gentlemen. There he goes. <laughs> well, <yeah>. oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the the EU announced uh, that they were investing a, a couple of general things: uh, virtual worlds and a, a generative AI. But then, very specifically, said we are investigating Microsoft's uh, strange relationship with OpenAI and whether it breaks antitrust laws because they've effectively found a way to in is sort of acquire a company, but not acquire a company and yeah. thus never be held to a kind of regulatory standard. Uh, I think we can all agree if Microsoft tried to buy OpenAI, uh, Activision Blizzard or not, they would have been like, no, like the multiple regulatory bodies would have uh, blocked that uh, purchase. So yeah, but they almost got it on an aqua hire, right? Like that, yeah, that that's was right. the other That would have skirted it too. I know. That's yeah. so, so crafty. I love that. Mm. Um, like if only any of it was intentional. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, I, sometimes <laughs> you stumble into a good strategy. It's okay. That's it. uh, and then uh, OpenAI just announced that right before the show started, I think, uh, that they have launched their GPT store. Um, this is only for paying customers. So I think it's... Um, GPT, uh, chat GPT plus enterprise and teams, mm -hmm. um, teams plan was announced today. Uh, that's, you know, 30 bucks per month per user, right? Uh, but 25 bucks per month per user when you build annually. Um, and this is the, this is the teamsification I would say of chat GPT, right? <laughs> uh, you have an app store now and I, I, it's a platform. Um, 
And uh, I don't, you know, it's interesting. I, uh, Leo was making the case last week, you know, can, can chat GBT replace the New York times, right? And the answer is no. I mean, today, of course it can't, but you know, it, it, these kinds of things, um, you know, people are going to be able to build off of chat GPT and build AI applications. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. You know, I this mean, is, a, I this use is the path we wanted to go on. I'm using it every day now uh, with my, wow. my little um, expert Lisp expert system. Oh, right. Okay. Right. It's right. Right. Really great. And actually, that's a yeah, GPT. So, that's a perfect example. Yeah. So mm -hmm. when, when, when you think about like the New York times fearing this kind of thing, which I get on one level, and uh, there's also a bigger issue where a team or not a team, a, a company like Google, especially fears the possibility that this kind of technology could unseat it, especially it's search dominance, which is where it's advertising and revenue all it comes from. Right. So that's very interesting, but I I, th I think when you hear that, you think, well, it must be Microsoft Bing, which is powered by this, or maybe chat GPT itself. And honestly, I think the thing that may be uh, an issue for Google, although they're working on this exact type of thing themselves, right, is going to be these things that build off of it. And I think the real power, well, that's not the right term, but I think the real advantage of this in many ways is going to be not the Internet's body of information, but rather a company's or a very specific uh, data set like Leo's talking about for Lisp, right? Where uh, it, it gets squirrely when we go out into the world, but when we constrain it down to a company sized amount of data, maybe, right? And don't worry about the internet per se, or in Leo's case, a subset of what's out there on the internet, a very specific. I think this is, I think this stuff's going to be, I, this could be very interesting. So we'll see what comes I out of it. I uploaded websites that have the common Lisp spec. Uh, books that I had on my bookshelf that are PDFs. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this is if, so really what it duplicates is if I, and I just, it just happened the other day, I was doing a coding challenge and I said, oh, does common Lisp support um, yeah. least common multiplier? So yeah. I asked and I said, yeah, here's how you do it. And th the reason that's so great is because that is a very explicit question yeah. that has a finite and it's I could have flipped through three finite. or four books. It has a I very specific it. answer. Right. No, I know. Right. But I, and it, I told that, like it specifically, that's... don't hallucinate. Only come up with answers that are from these sources. Don't hallucinate. No, like, oh, this you know is what? your corpus. I'm, I'm just going to go to town, but you, you told me not to. <laughs> so, yep. Well, anyway, don't I, think that, I, think, I think this is very interesting. So uh, we will see. And by the way, you know, that don't hallucinate thing is right. An awful lot of that comes from. It's just trying to take, it takes a, a low affinity answer and produces it anyway. So you I think the word you're looking for is it's trying to be creative. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it's a byproduct of that, of the early you know, version. The biggest problem conceptually with AI, and it's something that um, OpenAI, and I think Microsoft too, but OpenAI explicitly is um, uh, putting out into the world on purpose. Mm -hmm. is this notion that we're humanizing it, right? It's like, yeah, anthropomorphizing. Um, yes. we are using, it's learning, you know, like as if this thing yeah. learns in any way, like a human learns, mm -hmm. like we, you, you think you understand what it's doing because you're like, oh yeah, no, I, I, I have read things and learned them myself. And it's like, yeah, that's not, how this works. And um, anyway, I, 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 they're, they're very purposefully, uh, that's in their retort to the New York times. There's some stuff in there where you're like, oh my yeah. God, guys, like seriously, like I'm, I'm now using the open AI API through home assistant. So it actually okay. maps to the house and because mm -hmm. the language models so much better, it, it, it gets it in because it's so better. specific, right. To what you need. Yeah. Right. And the same thing, the, the correct answer when it's not sure is to say, I don't know. Uh, this is going to come up later, but um, I, <laughs> I've been using uh, brave, search lately right and mm -hmm. i i have to say i i don't I, it's not as good as DuckDuckGo search whatever that's worth i i i had that magical moment with DuckDuckGo where i was like oh wow this actually works really well um and then i used uh, brave it, the way you know something's not working is when you have to go back to the old thing right so i mm -hmm. I, I found myself doing that thing i always found myself doing uh with search engines in particular which was you go back to just go back to google and then you, you search you're like yeah there it is there's the answer i was looking for and um, I, I think that's kind of what AI is like when you put it out into, when you put it against the world's data, it's like, oh, you're making me work too hard here. I, uh, you're, you should be giving me exactly what I asked for, but be, I think maybe because the data set is too big or something, it's, it, it doesn't, this is, you know, God, the guys from Yahoo tried to do this. I think uh, mm -hmm. the, one of the earliest uh, successes at Google technically was this notion of like rank based 
results, right? Where we somehow determine the relative authority of a source and then do a good job of promoting that thing. And I'm, I feel like AI is not, not always doing that as well, maybe. I don't know. That's yeah. maybe overly simplistic, but that's what I am. Okay. Uh, and then uh, we found out this past week which Microsoft uh, executive is sort of on the OpenAI board. Remember, this is a non voting She's an observer. An observer. And her name is Dee Templeton. Mm, not, do you know this person? I do. Yeah. Oh, I've never, okay. I wasn't aware of her. She, yeah, she is a cute. She's from Australia. She's New been Zealand? Microsoft for 25 years. I do. So, so sorry. Sorry. Well, as you know, uh, Richard, they're the same place. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Um, no, I'm sorry. Just kidding. Kidding. It's a joke. Um, <laughs> the U.S. and Canada are the same place. That's all I'm saying. There you go. Uh, 25 year Microsoft veteran uh, advisor to CTO Kevin Scott, right? Who mm -hmm. orchestrated the uh, partnership with OpenAI. Um, she, I, she'll be the one doing the grime or worm tongue thing. You know, this is what we joked about. They're like, open A is going to say, we're going to go in this certain direction. She's going to be like, actually, I guess we're going to go in this other direction. Uh, everyone. Yep. Everyone, good. Everyone voted. Um, you know, long, long to, uh, as someone who sat on a few boards, you know, when I figured out this, uh, I was an advisor and this particular CTO we're having a problem with was a smoker. Yeah. And I started going to the smoke breaks. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. Just a deal. Just it, to deal, just to have right. that conversation that's over the smoke stuff break. Gets it was done. totally, right. and it's right. that that's you know the the important part of observer is yeah you don't get to vote, but the action in a boardroom that doesn't mean, mean you can't. It's not in the boardroom. It's, yeah, it's Plus, everything. You can, you can still it. impact everyone's opinions and whatever. I, so. I've never seen a meaningful more board meeting where you didn't know the outcome going in the door. Totally. Like you do your homework. Ask us him all bit about that one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and so the fact that she's going to be there, which means she gets the package before the board meeting and, and she, and there's go and it will be looped in on some calls. Like that's yeah. the reality. Is she going to have influence? You're damn right. And by the way, yep. she kicks ass like, yeah, wicked oh, nice. smart. You know, the, she's a reason she ended up advisor to the CTO. Sure. She's, she was always working on the research side of things. She bounced in and out of MSR. Uh, she was really good at putting partnerships and stuff together. She <laughs> built a lot of good stuff. Like when I saw who it was, I'm like, yeah, good call. Plus good she's call. dressed like someone from the matrix. So you can tell she kind of kicks ass. Well, if you're um, going to hang out in Kevin Scott's world, yeah, that's kind of a gimme. Right? Yeah, you want to be <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, Anyway, she, yeah, that's great. Okay, so that's cool. I, I was, I'm not familiar with her. I'm um, sorry to say. Yeah, and I'm not, I mean, I'm not old friends with, with, with Detail with him. I think we met once, but I know her her work from running around MSR and she was always okay. smart as hell. Um, I didn't write about this one and I guess I probably won't, but uh, Duolingo, which is a language learning service and app, mobile app. Uh, and by, by the way, my wife and I are both subscribers to Duolingo Max, which is the, you know, the paid subscription version of it. Um, announced uh, this past week, or at least admitted to the fact that they are laying off about 10% of their contract workers uh, as they start to rely more on artificial intelligence, which of course this app is heavily based on AI. In fact, that Duolingo Max service I just mentioned incorporates uh, ChatGPT uh, to do conversational uh, exercises with their users. So, kind yeah, of and I also, you know, part of me was just like, Hey, you know what, the, you know what ML has been really good at for a long time? Translations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, well, this is right. An another, another finite, um, you know, data set or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think the thing that it, it, you, Duolingo is some is I've gone in and out of it over the years. I, 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 I think I've been using it. I want to say I could look it up as I think I want to say it said 2014 or something. It's a long time. There mm -hmm. was a time where you could, I could finish their lessons for French and did, and then moved on to Spanish, finished it, then went back and said, I'm just going to start over again with French. And then at some point they expanded. <laughs> and now I, I don't think I'm going to live long enough to you get through all to of it. You have to remember the uh, Duolingo is interesting because of its uh, origins. It was, uh, yes. it came out of Carnegie Mellon. In right. fact, it was funded by a MacArthur grant uh, mm -hmm. because he wanted, they were the professor behind it. was so, same, same guy who did recapture. Who does, does this remind you of any other company, by the way? Because of the way they kind of turned on their heels. And I, it yeah. reminds me of OpenAI a little bit he, because he originally... Wanted to, they wanted to be free, right? Duolingo It was, was going to be free. And the idea was we're going to pay for this by by providing this data 
right. to the companies that need it, right. and they're going to pay for this. And it was it was very altruistic. You know, we're yeah. going to make the world a better place. It was also right. a crowd point where nobody would pay them. It was a crowd. Yeah, so now it's uh, about one hundred twenty bucks a year, and uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's yeah, they raise money from Union Square Ventures. No, but it's yeah. honestly, it's a good history. service, and it's gotten yeah, very sophisticated. I, yeah. One hundred twenty dollars yeah. a year is a bargain. It's for probably what not it even is. that much. I'm sorry, yeah. I just threw that. I'm, but but ten bucks a month? Are you kidding? Like, yeah. it's a good service. A, uh, if you want to learn language, it's yeah. you know, it's I bought a lifetime way, I guess, to uh, Babbel, who is now a sponsor. By yeah, me, but before mm -hmm. they before they were a sponsor, I bought a lifetime membership because I thought, you know, I'm always going to want to learn a language. That's right. a great mm -hmm. thing to have. Sure, you know, I don't know that they ever did this, but they were talking about they they were going to and probably have already done. Uh, they they're going to do math, I guess, so people can learn different types, you know, types of math or whatever, and and be more advanced there. They should do. I guess maybe it's too late now, but they could do coding languages. Why not? You know. Anyway, yeah, Duolingo is a good service. But... All that stuff. By the way, yeah. uh, Joe Esposito has created a special uh, yeah. sticker for you, Paul. Now, for the AI update. The corner. AI update <laughs> corner. I like it. This is like the Sam good Altman. keep, the good housekeeping seal of approval. There you go. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> You didn't, this there was not done by shark. AI. This was done the by The problem for human. Sam is the shark behind him is Microsoft. And, uh, <laughs> and it's hungry. Wow. Uh, yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so obviously AI, people are worried about layoffs and yada, yada, yada. But this is, uh, this is not, you know, we've replaced our staff with robots. These are contract workers. I mean, this is them becoming leaner and, uh, and probably faster moving and all that kind of stuff. And this is the kind of place where I think AI can help with efficiencies and whatnot. So. We'll see. A couple of years from now, we'll be talking about Skynet, but um, and I, I for know, one, me, can't like, wait. That's good for Skynet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just want you to know, rain I'm down all, the missiles. All in on the robots. Yep. 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 I made. A, I used AI to make a artwork for one of the other articles we just discussed. It was, uh, I think, of the EU investigating OpenAI and Microsoft, and um, uh, <laughs> it's an image of shackled robots standing in front of a tribunal of some kind. And I had to crop it down low because the AI images of robots that are up on the screen had boobs. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I, I think people are going to focus on that. It depends I think on I'm what gonna you have trained to tra on, obviously. It's not what yeah. I, uh, that's not what I didn't mention the boobs. Um, yeah. So I just added that. I don't know. Maybe it's trying to understand humans a little better. I don't know. Anyhow. But okay. you said you liked <laughs> boobs. I, it's just, I'm not taking a stance one way or the other. Um, I've been tracking okay, so. your eye motions, Paul. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yes. There was a great movie in the eighties about that. Uh, Looker. Do you remember that? The girl oh, no. from the Partridge family was in it and it was about the computer training where people's eyes looked during ads. And it was always on the woman's bathing suit as she went by on the thing. Yeah. They were like, we're going to target ads this way. And actually that was pretty prescient. I had to say. Mm. Before okay. it was cool. Yeah. <laughs> a long time before it was cool. All righty. Um, I haven't seen Looker in all right, 30 years. Um, anywho. So, yeah, we got a bunch of Xbox stuff as well this week, which is kind of cool. I have to say, uh, last week, remember, we did the Xbox Game Pass thing. The first uh, of those Game Pass titles I was going to play has not panned out for me, unfortunately. And I think it's called, like, Hell Hath No Fury or something like that. It's a World yeah. War II shooter. Um, it's not a... It, it's a massive online game, so... You get into it's 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 multiplayer, but it's like hundreds. It's a hundred people per level, and it's kind of the old school kind of PC server model. So I got in there and I was like, I'm in a platoon, and there people are yelling instructions at each other, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? It was like uh, it was organized, and and uh, it was not what I wanted. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to move on. Hopefully, Resident Evil, uh, I think it's four remake, will be the next one I try, which I think is next week. But anyhow. Uh, where are we? Uh, so micro said, uh, no, they have not announced this, but there is a, a report from venture beat saying that, um, Microsoft is looking into bringing more of its Xbox exclusive games to other platforms, including the PlayStation. And specifically they talked about sea of thieves, which is one of those kind of low boil success stories, mm -hmm. um, that I think is a good example of Microsoft just getting, uh, they've done this a bunch of times, but this is a game. I think a lot of casual people have never even heard of. It's a where great there's game. Actually, I like it. Yeah, it's millions fun. of people playing it. 30 million people, right? Wow. It two year, that was two years ago. I'm sorry. Um, and they keep adding content to it for free, which is one of those neat things that they do. And what could make it better? Uh, Cross-platform is what could make it better. So that's not a horrible idea. No and monthly subscription? 
Nope. There's nothing. Just the games that you buy at once. And, you know, I mean, you could get it through Game Pass and that would be a subscription. But no, this is, right. they've done this for things like uh, uh, flight simulators like this. Uh, Gears of War does this. Halo is doing this. Uh, the latest Halo. Um, yeah, it just begs how they pay in the content creators. Yeah. Uh, well, right. I think, yeah, I don't know. I was going to say, uh, I'm sure. I actually don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, but it's a good, yeah, it's just kind of, a, it's a neat thing for gamers, I would say. And so I think uh, this is the trick is you want it if it put those games everywhere, which by the way, was kind of their marketing during the whole Activision Blizzard thing. They're like, you know, I think you understand, like we want to put these games everywhere. Um, we're only talking about a game here, so I wouldn't get too, too excited. But, um, you know, Sony start, has been increasing their uh, porting of games to the PC, for example. I, I, I think anything that puts games uh, in as many places as possible is a, is a good idea. And I guess Anthony is saying that I guess they do have season passes for cosmetics and other things. Yeah. So a lot of the content they put out is in fact free, but that's interesting. So they and actually, it does. So, it, and if you're playing on the console, you have to have game pass. Oh, you do. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So that's how they do it. Hey, you know, I worry about revenue models just because if there isn't <laughs> one, it. somebody's going to cut it. I'm just like, who cares? It's great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, Microsoft is going to hold a developer direct live stream on the 18th, which is a week from tomorrow. So a week from Thursday, mm. um, where they're going to talk about some, uh, much anticipated Xbox exclusive games, um, including Shinua's Sega Hellblade two, which you know, whatever, that doesn't mean yeah, whatever, um, there's going to be a new Indiana Jones game, which actually is eagerly, uh, um, uh, awaited, um, they very specifically say, as they do these days, uh, nothing from Activision Blizzard. So, not um, there yet. I mean, yeah, yeah I know. Takes, I don't takes, know how they're not there yet. Your, takes know, time but, to get your hand around. Uh, it, man. Yeah, I wish it would be a little faster. I wanna, they're still I wanna, looking I, for the landmines left behind by Kotick, right? Yeah, yeah, that's for sure. Mm. Um, Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, Minecraft Legends, which was a Minecraft RTS game, right? Released, uh, I think it was last year. Uh, yeah, sometime last year. Uh, is being end of life. That um, was quick. Yeah, they've done this a couple of times. Remember right before the pandemic started, they were coming out with a, um, I think it was an AR VR Minecraft uh, spinoff that within a year wound down because, you know, people weren't doing stuff out in the world. Yeah. Um, but that was part of it. They were. It was going to be the thing where you could go to a place and kind of experience things. But now that, you know, they got rid of that. Um, yeah, I guess this one... It's not that unusual for massive multiplayer games. It just costs so much to run the infrastructure. Unless yeah. you get to a certain number of, of players, you got to stop. Right. You know, ask Electronic Arts how many attempts they've made on how many games. And spinoffs are tough, right? Mm -hmm. um, everyone remembers Laverne and Shirley, but you forget the other 30 games those guys try to put out that are on TV shows. <laughs> that nobody comes, yeah. Yeah. It's terrible spinoffs. Like, Look at all the spinoffs of like the Jeffersons was a big one. Yeah. Um, was there a Lenny I mean, and Squiggy? Yeah. Oh, I hope so. Joni loves Chachi. I love those. Joni loves Chachi. Joni loves yeah. Chachi. That's a piece of <laughs> garbage. Uh, terrible. Hey, who do you like least on this show? Yeah, let's make a show about those guys. Um, although, you know, uh, they spun off uh, Better Call Saul from Breaking Bad. I, I, that was yeah, actually I, at the time was really better. While. Arguably, I was like, it, out of all the characters on that show, this would not have been what I picked, and it was awesome. So, well, I guess any because that character also exceeded expectations of the original story too. Like they ended yeah. up changing the writing. Yeah, he was completely liked comedic. It that much. Right, that's right. Yeah, and powerful. No, but I, yeah. Look, if that show had been very good, we would have been like, great. But it, like many people think it's better than the original, and it's like that's a interesting conversation because yeah. they're both fantastic. But uh, well, and yeah. did spin off movies from there that did okay. Yeah, yeah, like that Camino one was, uh, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that wasn't great. Um, I also they made a horrible commercial. Um, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. Uh, GeForce Now, uh, as part of Nvidia's kind of sweeping announcements at CES, uh, a bunch of you know Activision blizzards coming, obviously, but they're going to start having day passes, which is kind of interesting. Hmm. So you know, because if you think about it, like the tiers, you know, these monthly tiers, you can go in and out of these subscriptions pretty easily but they'll let you just try this thing you know for 24 hours right so you, maybe a hot new game comes out you're like you know what i'm gonna spend you know 3.99 to 7.99 it's kind of like renting a movie that's in the theater now and it's a little expensive but it's like yeah i just want to see it you know yeah i'm okay um, my, when i saw this my first thought was i have a buddy who doesn't have a subscription that i want to play with so i'm going to buy him a pass for the day so he can play with yeah him. and then maybe if he loves it he'll buy in and then he maybe becomes a customer right yeah there you go 
yeah, I think this is a good idea. That's kind of a, it's just a, um, a mechanism, right? Some yeah. way to make that work. I actually took this, uh, I saw this announcement and I said, you know, I haven't looked at cloud gaming in a while. I've been meaning to do this. I've been meaning to look at GeForce now. I, I played a couple games. It's a market that's very important. It's, yeah, uh, streaming is still tough. You were talking about like a, um, like a missed game for the a Apple headset. Yeah. And that's a good target because cloud gaming suffers from a different but similar problem with fast moving games where it's yeah. like, Ugh, like no, it no. gets squirrely. Well, cause the internet's only so fast, right? The speed yeah. of light is hard to beat. Right. 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 That's true. We got to figure out, we got to ask the aliens how they did it. Yeah. Um, they did. not It was a movie. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh yeah. That was fake. Uh, so Twitch <laughs> now there are also some layoffs to Twitch. Uh, this is not AI related, but uh, Twitch is on, they're owned by, Amazon. I Amazon. Think. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Amazon actually has other layoffs we didn't discuss around, I think, Prime Video and yeah, I'm kind I think of amazed devices you to write were, a layoff section for today's show. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Amazon. But, mm. you know, Twitch kind of factors in. Um, I, they had a bunch of layoffs last year. So this is 500, lay, 500 people. So it's not doesn't sound bad except then it's it's a third of the company 35 percent exactly yeah. oh, i'm sorry i was looking at amazon i'm sorry amazon it was amazon who had the bigger player yeah right. it's actually a big part of the company of that part of the company well and, it, and arguably they had their best revenue year ever right like yep. you can you for a small percentage one or two percent the very best they're right. making a living off of twitch really People probably forget the 15 seconds during which Microsoft was paying exorbitant fees to YouTube or Twitch streamers or whatever they were to get them to come over to their thing at Mixer. the time, which can anyone remember? Mixer. Mixer, yeah. Thank you. Mixer, yeah. Let's go over and to Mixer. They, and then when they uh, pay Ninja 10 mil. Oh millions God. and millions of dollars. And yeah. then they were like, oh, wait, you can't make money doing this. I got Joe Rogan. Um, great. Yep. So they got rid of that and they also got rid of Mixer. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I don't know. Twitch, I, maybe this falls to YouTube at some point. I feel like, isn't Twitch the biggest of these services? I feel like. Oh, yeah. After yeah, YouTube. One by they, far. They're dwarfed by YouTube. That's the point. Are they? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, totally. But you, it, yeah, yeah. But the what Twitch got nailed was interacting with people while you're playing a game. The, YouTube still doesn't do a good job of that. Like, that's its own unique thing. But so uh, where does Discord fall in all this? Discord is a kind of plays in the space too, right? Well, and Discord was in the gamer space, but it was much more yeah. the forum for the game. Yeah. Although they added the video side in so you could watch someone play. Oh, but it doesn't right. scale. Um, I mean, I, I mean, it's not meant for scale. Yeah, it's okay. much, it's, it's, a, it's a community space rather yeah, than so, the broadcast the game's space that is Twitch. Okay, interesting. Yeah, we have 77 okay. people watching us right now in Twitch. But it maxes right. How many? 660 and YouTube maxes at 500 million or something. I mean, oh, geez. You know. okay. Yeah, slightly, slightly bigger. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, so what the then, max is at But YouTube. it's also just, I think it's part of this is just Amazon is quite ruthless about margins. And so, yeah, some number and, was and, missed and blood was. Well, left. they're also laying people off at MGM and Prime. I mean, right. This is. You know they're cutting and this is last with. year after they gutted mm -hmm. a lot of their devices and alexa stuff yeah. and i think i you know look this is very pragmatic I, I job losses are always horrible i don't mean it like that way but this was always the satch and adela thing like you gotta mm -hmm. justify your existence i mean yeah. i think well and it, and there's a new ceo you don't know his name but he's that's right it's put not his scratch happy uh was yeah. it his, uh right nobody no david well, no. Uh, the person it's who's a, not bezos it's such a faceless company yeah, well, except, except Jeff Lassie. for uh, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, mm. I get it. Sure. You know, it's okay. it's it's no different than what's happening at Unity, not to. I was going to say, your... so everyone's favorite company in gaming, <laughs> Unity. Talk about a self. Actually, Got that's a, not true. It a, may a not be a self kickback. <laughs> well, unfortunately, it's the people getting kicked are the employees, right? Yeah. Uh, it's also a big deal for Apple because remember Apple forgot to fight with Epic, which makes mm -hmm. Unreal. So the yeah. Unreal Engine is really not preferred on on Apple platforms. So right. Unity right. is the company that's going to be making stuff for Vision Pro. Oh, okay, right. So this is I, interesting. Well, but and Unity also yeah. had a better solution for the three D work. Right. Uh, it's really hard. Yeah, Unreal is C plus plus. It's tough to work in. Right. Unity's got a much friendlier approach to doing things. Uh, yeah, because Unity works, among other things, with like C Sharp. You can use yeah, it. Exactly. You know, manage language, right? You can run it, work for it for the studio. Yep. Uh, 
obviously when uh, John Riccatelio had to leave after, well, herein lies the question. <laughs> Was this truly a self-inflicted wound? I want more money, so I'm going to do this. You upset the whole thing. Now you're out of job. The new guy's in and he's realigning. Or did he actually know the budget and knew they weren't going to make it? Right. And so it's like, we have to find you revenue streams. Then he screws that up. Yeah. And now we're be. seeing the consequences of your new revenue stream didn't work. Right. They certainly didn't help themselves. Um, no. I, I, it felt like a money grab. And um, yeah. I think could have been handled a lot yeah, better. Yeah, especially something, this is the thing is the Unity community is tight. Like yeah. you have an, a tremendous asset there. The fact that you didn't and know I, how to use it, you need to go work somewhere else. I don't know if you noticed this in our little tech space here, but people have infinite memories for things that went wrong. Mm, I still yeah. have people bitching at me about Sonos bricking devices that never owned Sonos speakers. Oh. They, 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 people just remember this stuff. Silver <laughs> you know? light. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> Yep. No, I don't think people are going to forget what Unity did. That's the problem. Yeah, for them. And that's it's, unfortunate. It's right. going to be hard for them to dig out from that. So, yeah, I, I, and looking at the press release, it's like, okay, this could be, we're just cutting away the bits that aren't making money anyway. Yeah. Or, right. you know, they've rethought the strategy. Now they're focused in a new direction. So you get rid of the stuff that's not on the strategy or right. the, well, we're running out of money. So let's ditch enough people to extend the ramp while we try and figure out what to do. Oh, I just got access to the Arc web browser on Windows. That's Congratulations. Very Lucky You're you. a winner. I got to go, guys. No, um, so, okay. <laughs> By uh, the way, yeah, I don't understand what? this company, the Arc company. Arc? Yeah, because, I mean, I've been using, I tried their browser on the Mac. I don't get it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't, I have not seen uh, Wait, I think this I used it briefly on the Mac. This is new, yeah, on Windows. They yeah. didn't have a Windows version. Yeah, just it's in, it's in like a invite beta thing now, yeah, so I guess. Good. I don't know. I don't get it. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'll let you know. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I want I diversity in the browser ecosystem. I'm not against that. I'm all for that. I just don't know. All Chromium, all the things. Yeah. That's not good. <laughs> that's why I use Firefox, but I'm a uh, tiny minority. Poor Firefox though. Did you yeah, read the dwindling. The big interview with those guys late, the recent one, I don't know where it was. Um, they're, they're like usage share is like 2% now. Yeah. It's yeah. dwindling on away. desktop. That's not uh -huh. good. What are you? IE? Well, they've made some bad decisions too. It's not just, I mean, there's been some questionable. Well, give us a review of the ARC browser. Maybe you yeah, can, uh, give me, you know, you've made me switch browsers more than once. So <laughs> I'm ready to do it again. Well, boy. I, I only put Brave on one of my machines. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I, I, Brave is perfect. It's just so perfect. It's a Chrome. Yeah, it's good days in bed. Based browser, though. It's I still Chromium like, engine. I really yeah. want to get okay. some diversity in the ecosystem. I, d I don't know I don't that know. I, I understand the thought, Leo. I don't know that it's important when it comes to yeah. I think when it comes engine. to rendering, I think compatibility yeah. trumps they, the diversity, diversity. I was hoping for with Edge was stop selling my stuff. Well, uh, yeah. So the thing we did, we talked about this earlier. Remember, you were saying about mobile apps and how we thought everything was going to be apps, and then it's yeah. like, well, hold on a second. Now we've got all these apps I need to maintain. I, this is nonsense. And that's what the web would be like if we had five different rendering engines. Like yeah. it's, well, I, in well, fact, it was it's what like the web, that. What is yeah. like? Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, this is the, but, the days of works best on internet Explorer. Or yeah. Or, and then the, and then there was that great period where if you tried to open that website on internet Explorer, it says go get a real browser. Yeah. Well, yep. I mean, you that have a standard. It. The problem is people don't adhere to the standard. I mean, you yeah. have a or standard. They, they do, but they implement it differently. Well, right? and so it's but that's you know, the thing. I mean, that's in Google's interest yeah. that there be, yeah, there's right. sure there's W3C, but there's also a Chromium standard. And as we become yeah. more dominant, yeah. then sites need to right. work with Chromium, and sure. that's uh, anti-competitive. And there's a good reason for having not having a monoculture, is security. Uh, a flaw in yeah. the Chromium uh, uh, is, yeah. I mean, yes, uh, I, yes. I, I, I agree. Uh, but on the other side, uh, the other hand, I mean, I don't know. It makes it a little. I think I it's mean, kowtowing to Google. It's saying, okay, we have a web standard, but you've created your own. By the way, Microsoft tried to do the same thing with IE. Oh yeah, absolutely. That was mm -hmm. the That's entire point this, of Internet Explorer. Right. That's, yeah. that's yeah. why there's this comp problem yeah. with compatibility. No, I, I, uh, listen, I completely understand. I, I just, it's just. I, I, I think the place You're giving Google a lot of power. For instance, they've yeah. changed the way extensions work so that ad blockers don't work. 
Uh, well, okay, hold they've on. Changed the <laughs> that's way a little, I mean, so. No, that's true. And they've changed the way third party cookies work. They've deprecated yeah. those. They have so much power in the space already. Letting but, them dominate the browser ecosystem is, a, is so the, really the, bad. So the, the ad blocker thing is has not actually happened yet. I mean, for everybody and uh, all of the major bro Chromium browser makers, except for Microsoft, by the way, which has been quiet about this, have said we're not doing this anyway. So they're they're ignoring that part of it, right? They don't have to. They'll do that. Manifest V three. They will. Yeah, they'll do it. All and right. uh, you know what? Everybody will end up doing it because well, I don't know. It depends how hard wired it is into the code. Maybe yep. non-trivial to uh, extract it. Right. Well, you know what? These code bases are forkable. They are open source. Yeah, but source. then you have exactly what you don't want, which is a... Well, I'm sorry, you were asking for diversity. Uh, yeah, but that's the wrong kind <laughs> yeah. of diversity. Right. Well, ah, I, I, okay. Okay. I, I, I just speaking purely re rendering engine, I, I, I think having a standard there is the, yeah. was the right call. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Fine. Uh, and that's really what we it's got. It's too bad that it's Google I say that, but I standard. honestly, I love the idea of Firefox. I got to tell you, there might not be a better mobile browser right now than Firefox. I love mm, Firefox. I actually happy. have Firefox on my phone and my tablet, and I I'm just waiting for all those praises for Safari it. you were going to give us. Where is that? Me? Anybody? I got nothing. Anybody at all? <laughs> it has a minimalist UI I like. Uh, I don't use Apple devices too much, so not a big deal for me. But if Safari uh, were they cross platform, do, uh, they have their I own. Might. They have their own rendering engine I'm, too. I'm cr yeah, no, no, I, I like it, but I'm cross platform. And I, yeah. so right, I that's the thing for me. Like that, right? That to me is, yeah. You talk about diversity is important, but I actually think um, I will call it. Uh, I don't know, portability or whatever is yeah. to mm -hmm. me is the biggest thing. I it, well, or one of the bigger things, I guess. Um, standard is what standards are. What's important? Yeah, maybe that's the best way to say it. A standard. Unfortunately, yeah. uh, these are companies hard. are bigger than the standards bodies, and so they just right. do what they want. Right. Well, well they're well, de facto these, standards. These companies they're are so big. on the standards <laughs> just, body. Yeah, yeah they are true. the standards. We are the standards. Yeah. That's right. It's it's yeah, all the, the Alexander Haig of you know standards. Yeah, just, the fix is in. Yep. Yep. Oh well, Big that's life. What are you gonna stop. do? What are you gonna do? Stop. Why don't we pause Complain. here? Okay. We <laughs> will be uh, getting to the back of the book. How about that? Richard's had it with this. <laughs> the back of the book. Coming up as like we the, continue. I like the big text, Leo. It makes me happy. It's like, I know what to do now. <laughs> That's why yeah. I put it there. I, all text, it needs is like a little, like a, like a spotlight effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like hey, bouncing um, emojis. I do, I do <laughs> want to mention that uh, this is mm -hmm. a good time for people to consider uh, joining Club Twit. If they're not already a member, reason being, uh, ad sales dwindling uh you know we've been looking ahead we do we forecast every year and you know just like twitch <laughs> just like oh everybody well, else no, no, not, not just like twitch leo well we had a layoff uh an equivalent yeah, yeah. percentage 35 percent of our staff uh, last month uh mm -hmm. cancel shows and and it could continue it because we are not owned by amazon <laughs> we do not have deep profitable pockets we are just what we are and, and hey if you like what we do and i think it's really important i believe in our mission to, to educate uh you know a, a group of tech enthusiasts like you on uh, on what technologies what's happening in technology i guess that's why i'm going to buy that stupid vision pro <laughs> Jeez. I want, I desperately need for this not to be my fault. It's I your fault. I, I, Paul talked to me. I don't no. care in a way no, no, what no, you do. No, you're right. But I, I, had to, I had to get it. I'm going to spend my yeah, own money. I think so, right? I won't use uh, Twit, Twit's money. Uh, I'll just use my own money. Um, but, uh, you know, it's good to do that, though, because then you really feel the pain. You know mm. what 3500 bucks means to a it's real a, person. It's, a, it, it's an extra layer of rage. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh so your money will not go to my Vision Pro. Your money will go to keeping the lights on, the studio running, the people employed, and the shows expanding. Things like um, Paul's Hands-On Windows, which is a great show, and is in our club only. So what do you get? Well, first of all, 7 bucks a month is all you pay. Ad-free versions of all the shows, additional shows that are only in the club. You get access to the, the Discord, which is a wonderful community of geeks. And we talk about a lot more than just Twit. We talk about everything geeks are interested in. Uh, you also get the Twit Plus feed with special stuff. Lisa and I did an inside Twit kind of explaining the situation uh, last week. That's club members only, that kind of thing. But the real reason is because you want to keep Twit going. Uh, and I think that's a small price to pay. 7 bucks a month, $84 a year. There are family plans and corporate plans. Do me a favor. Please visit twit.tv slash club twit. 
do what you can. Some people are actually giving more than seven bucks. And if you feel like it's worth it, that's great. We appreciate it. Uh, seven bucks is all we ask. Uh, all right. Plug over. <clears throat> Let's get to the back of the book. Starting with Paul Thorat, his tip of the week. So two interesting uh, asides related to this tip. Uh, I just signed into the ARC web browser. And I was able to use the pass key saved on my global computer here to nice. authenticate. Nice. Which is the way pass keys are supposed to work. Um, so that was great. Uh, in the bad news department, uh, it's based on Chromium. So um, <laughs> yikes. Is it? Arc anyway. Is, is, uh, is another Chromium? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, it uses the Chrome Web Store. So sure, why yeah, wouldn't I would say it? so. Yeah, why wouldn't it be? Yeah. Um, so anyway, interesting looking. Looks like an Apple product, but whatever. I'll get over that. Um so I've been writing a bunch, a bunch of security topics lately. I've been looking into password managers. Coincidentally, last pass last week, I think we talked about this, started requiring 12 character master passwords, which is like, guys, it's 2024. I, passwords? Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, why, why don't password managers all support pass keys? And I don't mean just storing them. I mean, letting me sign in or authenticate oh, to their yeah. service, right? So yeah. if you look this up, every one of these companies has announced at some point in the past year that they are going to support them. All right. Um, the two that I would consider, well, the one I moved to last year, Bitwarden, and the one I would consider using 1Password, uh, mixed results, I think it would be the best way to say it. 1Password um, in mid-December launched a public beta of a version of their product that supports passkeys, but it only supports passkeys, which is kind of fascinating. Um, there is no master password, and you cannot add one. You cannot... Uh, add an authenticator app. It's it's you use pass keys, and this is very interesting because if you <laughs> sign up for this thing, have it on one computer, and uh, delete the thing, it's gone. Like you're you, there's no way to recover it. So you have to pro proliferate that thing out into the world, and uh, that's where I ran into problems. It doesn't work very well. And uh, I asked Richard the discussion Richard and I were having before the show was related to this because, as a non-security expert, I feel a little out of my league in depth when I discuss this topic, because I don't want to, I don't want to say something that people will follow my advice and they'll go down some insecure path, but here's my theory. And uh, it is this, we all have secure devices. Now um, they have secure storage in a, in a security chip, like a TPM or a Titan or whatever it's called on your device. Um, pass keys work. Oh, I'm sorry. And we also have secure sign in uh, biometric uh, facial recognition, fingerprint recognition, or some kind of a pin, which is typically like an additional step. So you're not typing passwords, right? Um, these systems are considered so secure that pass keys will allow themselves to be stored on those things. And then they can move around to your different systems. So in other words, I'm signing into Google on my computer and I type in my username and it says, Hey, you have a pass key on another device. Do you want to use that? I'm like, yeah, I do. And then I can okay the passkey on here. And then it says, hey, do you want to put a passkey on this device so you no longer have to worry about this? Because this device is secure too. I'm like, yeah, I do. And that's how I just signed into the Arc browser. So if that system is so secure, please explain to me why I sign in securely. I, I Look, I have to exercise some <laughs> common sense, right? I mean, I'm, I'm, I am signing in securely. I, I don't not have a password, et cetera, et cetera. But my computer's secure. Uh, I'm using it. And then when I'm not using it, it's locked, right? And plus it's in my house 99 point something percent of the time. Anyway, like why, why do I have to type in a password to access a password manager after I've already authenticated myself onto a system that could have a passkey that would keep this thing safe, but doesn't, but does it have to? What's the difference? Like wh when I sign into windows, I'll just use windows, right? I, but that authentication passes through to OneDrive. I can access all my online storage to teams, to outlook. It passes through to the web. So if I have to access my Microsoft account on a Microsoft website or wherever else, it goes right through. No problem. I don't ever have to type in anything. It just goes right through. So if it's that secure, why does my password manager need a password? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not actually telling, please, Leo, especially Leo, because Leo takes me so it's like I am so going to change. I'm going to fire Bitwarden. I'm going to change password managers. No. <laughs> Paul no, told it, me. I think it's a hard thing to do. I have been using passkeys with Bitwarden. I like the idea of yep. passkeys being stored in the password manager, not the device, because then okay. I can use it everywhere. Because they're portable. Yeah. And, and okay. automatically and, portable. But it's tricky. Yep. No, I get that. It's tricky. Yep. I, it I is don't tricky. know why uh, password managers aren't using single sign-on 
Right. For it doesn't the make any sense. Master password. I, it seems like they should. Okay. Be. But yeah. okay, I, I, I asked, I asked Richard that. this question semi rhetorically. I guess I'm asking you as well, Leo. If these things are so secure that pass keys are safe, why? What's the difference? Look, you have to be you have to be smart about this. You can't leave a laptop in a cafe, walk over, get another cup of coffee. You have to lock it, right? But the but if you're sitting there using the thing, why isn't it, I'm here? I, I've signed in securely. I so everything on there. Bitwarden does. Uh, support login with device, so you can yes, use it. Yes, but it's it. ponderous, and you, you actually have to do it a lot. Yeah, but yeah, I think ponderous. that there's a reason. I mean, that well, that's what I'm wondering. What's the reason? They like, got to make it secure. Why? <laughs> Look, I mean, I, I'm 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 saying this semi facetiously, but because to, to my mind, it is secure because it's on this secure device I'm well, already but using. It's isn't it do it? So Bitwarden does it by uh, I'm on my Windows device, and mm -hmm. it says okay. Uh, approve the login on your iPhone and now we know it's you and that's good. Isn't that what Microsoft's right. doing? So here's the, so the problem, it's, this is not a Bitwarden problem. So the problem with uh, password managers, standalone password managers, is that they're extensions for web browsers. And an extension is not a full-fledged application. That's true. So if you want to integrate with the system in certain ways, you actually have to install the app as well. This is a problem with, not That's a problem. That's true with most password it managers. It's, yeah, yeah. It has to be because it, there's right. no other way for them to do this stuff. So, okay, there's an additional thing you got to do. Whatever, big deal. But to my mind, like if I have a fingerprint reader or face, I should be able to, it should just do this. Like I, I should. It, On that device, the same it. device you mean, yeah. Yeah, like I don't understand why I why is this thing ever locked when I'm sitting in front of the computer? Yeah, and you know I'm I'm digging around in here and it's like I think it's existed Bitwarden, they've just named it badly. So there is a thing you can sort of turn off There's some device security login features and feature. Yeah, yeah, the the right. problem is eventually your computer reboots, right? Yeah. And when it does, you actually have to authenticate in some way. And I can't this is the the consistency problem I ran into over the weekend. I spent all weekend on this. I spent so much time on this I, on uh, that Sunday at 8 p.m. when we usually start watching a movie, I was like, I need another hour. I'm sorry. I, mm. I I have to finish this. And I never did. It was so frustrating. I was up half the night because, you know, your mind's like, whatever. Yeah, but we, what you're looking for and the thing you want and, and what Bitwarden should say is, how do I get to password lists? Yeah, well, I want this thing it. to be no, password. They, no, right. no, they have and that. They do, saying. but they, 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 they don't really. <laughs> that's the problem. Yeah. It's not both 1Password and Bitwarden have hurdles that like for example i'll just use the I, because i spent so i there was a point i thought i was going to be switching to one password because i'm like here we go they do pass keys yeah. but no the answer is no because they do pass keys so poorly that system i just described does not work so for example i said uh, it doesn't matter what i'm using what system it doesn't matter i'm going to sign into some account and it says you, you want to use a pass key on your phone yes and i, I do the pass key thing on my phone and then it says hey do you want to, that's how pass keys are supposed to work. You're using a secure device. We can put a pass key on this computer. So you never have to do that again. The answer is yes. One pass key, one password does not do that. It is so lousy. It, it's these systems are just, you would think these companies that are in charge of our passwords would get this one thing right. The goal is passwordless. Anyway, I'm, I, the tip honestly is a tip for me. I need help with this. I'm trying to figure out whether or not my vague belief that I do not want to recommend to others, which is this, that if I, I don't care what device we're talking about, I, I sign in securely. I should just be able to run any app. I don't care what it is. What, what, what's the difference? I've signed in. I, you know, oh, it's you're, me. You're swimming upstream uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Richard, but I think you're swimming upstream because the modern standard is zero trust, right? Yes. And yep. zero trust means just because you're logged into your device doesn't mean I should trust you just as but much I'm as saying, just because you're in the network see, means I should trust I you. I think, but pass keys work that way. And I, what I'm saying is I, what I'm adding to it is that element of common sense. I'm saying as the user, I trust myself enough to know that I'm not going to leave this thing open to the world for other people to use, that I'm using it myself. And that when I go away, I'm going to close the lid. If I'm in a public place or if in my house, I don't care. And that's on me. And I, I'm trying to think of a way I can sort of write this or say this to other people and not come off as you don't understand security and what you're suggesting is ridiculous. When in fact, this is literally how pass keys work. And I don't understand why. I will why. ask, you know, yeah. I will ask the wonderful Steve Gibson, because you're right. Okay. It's, you're right. 
Uh, I want my pass key. My password manager should write a pass key to the TPM on my computer, to the Titan chip on my phone, and I should be able to authenticate on the device and have that pass through, and I should never have to sign into that thing again. That's my Well, contention. okay, here's part of the problem. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not in the passkey spec. Oh, okay. So, and that was that was the whole thing was passkey authenticates you with a device. But, it, but and this was the yes. whole thing is if I, if I, if I have pass keys on my iPhone, they're not on my Windows device. That, and they can't right. be moved to my Windows device. They live no, on they can't be moved, but you could use that to create one. No, I I am pa paranoid enough. That's my point. I'm paranoid enough yeah. that I have not written this and I'm asking a question. I'm yeah. not saying I'll ask, uh, I'll this ask, is a fact. I'll ask Steve. I, I, That's an interesting Yeah, so I, I am. Um, yeah, it's an interesting problem. Um, I want to do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And I think, and I, and I myself, swear, I think it exists. I think we're just... Yeah, they, I, okay. I think the security people. The one thing we know for sure about up. security people is they don't know how to build a UX to save their lives. Yeah, there. Okay, and that, so by I, the way, is absolutely fair. I, yeah, and I, I think this feature. Yeah, oh, and uh, yeah, regarding se yeah, sessions should expire, of course, and then I should securely authenticate with Windows Hello on my PC, and it should be fine. Now the question is, I, I do does the uh, the service determine that uh, with with your Google account? Yeah, Google does. We all know this. Every once in a while, Google says, "Hey, you got to sign in." And I, whatever that time, what is it, a month yeah. or less? I don't know, whatever it is, I, you know, whatever. And, and, Maybe it, and it really is set by, you know, when we, and of course, I'm leaning on on Azure because I spend so much time on that particular problem. It's like, mm -hmm. it's actually accounting for the number of unusual things in this login. Like yes, your IP this, address this changed, be part of, yes. amp yep. it up. Your know, device has changed. You never logged in from this device before, amp this it is up. A, right? This is probably not the right word, but this is almost like a heuristic approach to security yeah. where you say, look, you have signed in at this IP in this physical location every day for the past 90 days. Like, you know, you, you're signing in securely with Windows Hello. We think it's you. Now, yeah. if if while you're doing this, while your session is still active, someone you try to sign in in Vietnam, yeah, we're going to throw up some roadblocks there. Sure. That, that is not just expected. It's what should happen. It's what you should want, right? Yeah. No, LinkedIn fired me an email saying, are you logging in from Florida? And yeah. Like, you don't want to nope. see that. But but then again, you do want to see that because yeah. now you know the system's working. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I hate to I don't mean to say like I'm just asking questions like some kind of a jerk. Yeah, I mean, the, I, I, but the I way literally you get people to ignore security is by asking the same question over and over again for no reason. Yeah, right? that's you exactly want right. That question to right. be asked when something's different. So, uh, ex okay. So someone has said Bitwarden suggests you do that. That doesn't work. So <laughs> that's the problem. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't actually work. So it's. You, you can't, you, I'm sorry, you can't, yes, you can configure it in a fairly insecure way. And then you yeah. sort of check it on yourself. You can do that. What I'm saying is we shouldn't have to think about this stuff. No. What it should allow is the thing I've described, that pass key style experience where I'm authenticating with whatever the local security is. Yeah. Um, this setting that someone has put into the uh, uh, Discord, I've I've done this on seven or eight different computers. I've, <laughs> I've done this a lot. It, it It is such an inconsistent experience. and um, And part of it has to do with, I think because I'm signing in in different ways or whatever, but yeah. I'm really trying to come up with something where it's like, I'm balancing. I'm not balancing. Actually, that's the point. It's not a compromise between security and convenience. I'm trying to arrive at a thing that is both secure and convenient yeah. because that's what makes people do it. Um, if something is secure, but it's a pain in the butt, they just, they just say it. no. That's Let's why my wife will never use a security key. Okay. Right. So uh, it's just I'm looking at her. Bitwarden right now. Uh, right. And you have to have the app. You're right because you co you don't want to yep. do that, and you, you really don't want to do it as a browser extension. That's JavaScript and not approve right. login devices. Login requests. Use this device to approve login requests made for other devices. I check that. Now my right. Windows machine will use Windows Hello when I want to log into Bitwarden. Let's say on my yeah, uh, iPhone, on and I can do the same on oh. my iPhone. Yeah. So, and by the way, that's that is that is a very pass key like experience. Yeah. That's. So how this thing should a, work. You, it's a two-factor thing. You need another device, and, and it has right. It ha, and but it also has to be a secure device, right? Right. It has to have secure sign-in, secure storage, security chip, right? All yes. these things have to exist. That's yes. what makes this thing make sense. Yes. Um, let me see. Yeah. yeah. The problem is so the the problem. And, this, is, so and then you on can, my on my iPhone, it also <laughs> says there's a box. Yes. That says yep. use this device to approve login requests right. made from and then other mm -hmm. places. 
Oh, so I, listen, I've done this a thousand times. Oh, okay. I know. All right, you've been here. I know. No, right. what I'm what, what I'm saying is like for right now, you could say, look, I just did it, and it's like, okay, but you got to use it for a couple of days. <laughs> like yeah, the thing is, now actually, is, gotta, is it better? Yeah, you get to and and does it work right? If I if I actually reboot the computer or sign out and sign back in or whatever the you know, there's a million ways to do it. Um, if I go to a browser that I've never used before or whatever, you know, like there's all these different scenarios. Like, what is the behavior? And right now, these things these things are all very, especially Bitmore's inconsistent, is the way I would describe it. But I'm going to reboot my Windows password. Machine. Might be just broken. And see if this like can, it doesn't work. See if this can do it's it. It's a beta. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to reboot my Windows machine and then. In okay. theory, yep, I should be able to. It should log just be in. there. It should be open. It should be wide open to the world because you turned off. Oh, it did you? Well, actually, you no, didn't. no, no. I don't want it to be. I you want it to it do off. some you authentication. You want to unlock with. Ideally, it would yeah, say, "Yeah, hey, I just yep. sent a request to your iPhone. Approve it, and you're in." Just as it does with yep. Windows, right? Or, well, okay, that's a little inconvenient. I mean, I, I ideally, you, I think you set it up, didn't you? That you could sign in just. Using Windows using alone. Using Windows in other words, alone? No, I don't, look, I don't, no, I, have I don't mind authenticating yeah. every once in a while, right? Uh, first time after reboot, that's fine. Like, I get it. The, the problem is it's not, it, one of the, not the, the problem, there are a million problems, but one of the problems is it's not proactive, right? So what, what you really want is for that thing to authenticate explicitly, give you the opportunity, because otherwise you get the situation where you're clicking in the box and nothing's popping up. Well, what, like, what I want is to never have to type my... Uh, Long password. master password. That's exactly. What, it's that way I on my Mac, ever. by the way. Yep. A fingerprint ever. reader unlocks Bitwarden every time. But see, Apple, that Apple that's mm -hmm. one thing Apple doesn't do well at. There are far too many uh, times when you sign into a Mac where it's like, got to type your password. Or your, uh, sorry, your PIN. Like, you can't you can't use the finger. You have to type your PIN. And it's like, guys, like, what do you do? Come on. I don't know. I don't, that kind of stuff makes me a little crazy, but. I'm, I'm really, I want to figure this out. I want, I want there to be a way that is, but it, it can't be compromising security for convenience. I want it to be yeah, you convenient. Want it to work, yeah. Convenient enough. And to me, Windows Hello is convenient enough. I do, and then you can set whatever timeout you want. I mean, we have all, you know, we have different ideas there, but um, I don't mind authenticating. I, I, I like that. You know, there's a, there's a part of that to me that is, well, I think communicating safety. You're right. The, here's where you're right. The master password is not the ideal situation because people are it's using ridiculous. short, easy to remember master passwords. Right. Ideally, yep. you would use these strong authentication methods right. available now on many platforms like Windows Hello to do right. the authentication because that's better than yep. a password. Um, and yes. I, so, yeah. yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. Some I'm, of I us can memorize exactly right. 36 character passwords, Leo. It's this is the thing I asked, I asked Richard before the show. I said, did you, do you literally like your computer reboots and you, do you literally type in your master password? And yeah, he said, just, yeah. And yeah. and by the way, that password is 30 characters long. And I was like, yeah, yeah. mine's 32 or something. And I, it's not when I, I okay. not when I reboot the machine, when I reopen the browser, I can't even accurately yes. type a four digit pin. I'm not going to type 30 <laughs> characters. My God. Well, you get used to it. I don't know. You get very, real good at it, actually. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, you know, I always use a mnemonic for my uh, master passwords. So yeah, I'm yeah, uttering the mnemonic in my head. I hope she, I'm not She sells it. seashells down by the yeah, seashore. Kind yeah. Of I hope I'm not saying it out loud. But, uh, yeah, I have a mnemonic. Actually, I right. have a mnemonic, and then I add, I pad it with some additional stuff. So it's really Elite. two mnemonics right. to make it really long. Mnemonic harmonies. Yes. Oh, um, are well, you done with this? Yeah, <laughs> welcome to my pen. I'm sorry. I just I, I I wanted to throw it by you guys because you're I, smart I, I and mean, I trust I, you. And I love and I, that you're writing this because this will really help people. I'm not sure right? I am writing this. I get it. I'm you not don't sure want to look trust a fool. myself to I write understand. This. You don't want to look a yeah. fool. No, you don't, I don't want to mislead to, people. Right. I don't want to mislead it. I, God help me if anyone ever comes back and says, You told me and then yeah, right. they lost their credit card numbers or whatever. Yeah. I can't I could never live with myself. I it's no. too important to get this wrong, and which it, is why I'm not published, right? I have to, well, I have to it, be honest. I don't have this problem on, on with Bitwarden on either the iPhone or the Mac. I love when people deny do on the Windows. experience I've had. Yeah. I love that. I, I, do like, I, don't, I don't. No, no, no. I don't have this experience, so you're wrong. And it's like, no, no, I'm not okay. saying you're wrong. I'm just saying it's because no, you're No, no, you're not. Someone Windows. else is. And I'm like, my answer to that is always. Oh, I see. Cancer exists even if you don't have it. <laughs> so... <laughs> Just right. please, dear God, please don't deny the experience. You don't know what I experienced. That's not fair. Let me reboot anyway, the iPhone. Um, because okay. I think I don't have to enter the master password ever on my if iPhone you, or my Mac. I okay. think I've, I've no, turned oh, on. Uh, by the way, uh, this experience is actually 
closer to what I want on mobile. So for yeah. some reason on mobile, the biometrics work. The biometrics pass through, right. and this is honestly in the. I've gone down this weird um, kind of path because it doesn't work all the time on on Windows. I haven't. No, no. I'm, uh, now that I'm looking at it, I'm not that far away from saying, okay, I'm ordering USB fingerprint readers for these. Oh, <laughs> right, because that's awesome. Because right? the biometric like, part works. Yeah. yeah okay. Fingerprint yep. readers are great. Like here I am. They, uh, actually, I just unlocked with the watch on my Mac. Yeah. Which right, is even right. better, right? And I got um, a Microsoft authenticated thing the other day and I was walking around the house and I, my watch buzzed and I'm like, Oh my God, here we go. I'm going to do and Nope. Can't do it. <laughs> uh, uh, anyways, uh, Apple on. watch, my friend, Apple watch. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> anyway, Anywho, um, it's a, yep. it's a Paul rant, you know, take it or leave. Well, it's, it's your um, Paul rant. Hmm, maybe. Yeah. The, yeah. There's a reason I haven't recommended the Yubi keys other than Sysadmins. It is just, the way, just, just too, much, too get much. The YubiKey with fingerprint reader. I thought, ah, perfect, right? No, this is the solution. Right, it's no. actually worse because you have to. Yeah, I your think pin. anyone could. You, my cat could unlock that thing. I don't. I, I. In fact, I looked it up. I'm like, is this really a fingerprint reader? <laughs> this is just. It's just push the button. You know, like I think any. I well, think it's a fingerprint could, reader, but it. But is it? It's not. My experience has been it's not know. reliable enough that I end up entering, entering the pin. A yeah, lot. it doesn't seem very good. Yeah, I thought this is, oh, this is perfect, right? Here's the real solution. A hardware key that uses your thumbprint, so it's super, you know, reliable. Right, right. I, yeah, yep. No, no. Security keys are tough. I I, I I, could get away with, I could absolutely use a security key, obviously, but, and I, I've been, been testing that. If you don't no, mind. I could, never, I could never, like I could never give that to my wife. I hope she this multi-device thing works. Like, you know what would make me yeah. happy on with, with opening a browser on my PC? That my phone popped up and said, should I open Bitwarden for you? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. Here's yes. my thumb. Thank okay. you. I do, do the authenticator iPhone. thing. Do I had the, the thing. iPhone pin because they require you to enter the pin uh, when you restart. Well, because you rebooted. Now, you let rebooted. me see if Bitwarden yeah. opens from my face. Or right. do I have to? I bet to, it does. I, I bet it does. Will, yeah. That stuff works better on, yep. on phones. Just right. worked. Yeah. So yep. once now, I'm in the, I, once so, I'm authenticated okay. on the phone, I'm, face I'm actually ID glad you went. Bitwarden. Yeah, I went, I'm glad you went in that direction because... I, that's the path I started down was I wanted this to work as well on com the computers. It does right. on the phone. Right. And it, it just kind of doesn't, well, you know, and it's, it's, it doesn't, it's a little frustrating. Dare I say it, it doesn't on windows. It also doesn't, it really doesn't on Linux. Yeah. Well, but whose fault is that? Right. Um, mm. Actually, it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, it does matter, but I, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time experimenting on a Chromebook or a Mac because well, let me reboot my Mac. if that works, that's great. Let but I, I, I need it to work see. on Windows. This is for mm -hmm. a book about Windows. Yeah, no, I understand. But right. I'm going to reboot my Mac. And my guess is it's going to be very similar to the experience with the iPhone, which is once I authenticate okay. on the Mac. You, but you have to type in your, your uh, code, yeah, your well, pen or whatever. Apple yep. does that. And then they, when you reboot no, a system, you do have to uh, use the password. So, the by the way, that's one thing it. Microsoft doesn't do. When right. you reboot a Windows PC, you can sign in with Windows Hello Face or Finger. Yes, that's right. You don't have, right. have to yeah. type in the pin. Right? Maybe that's why the password managers don't. So maybe, maybe it thinks it's not, it's not as secure not for that reason. Uh, that's It's interesting to me that a four-digit pin would be more secure than a... It isn't. ...an easily broken four-digit pin. <laughs> like, although, I guess it has a timeout uh, where it would fail um, after a number of attempts. You mean on the phone? It's six digits, first of all. Uh, no, I meant on Windows. But yeah, now let's see. My password is required to log in because I rebooted. Yep. And that you know I'm content with that. First of all, because I don't reboot that often. Sure. Um, That's how I know you're not using Windows. But go on. But and you know, you're right. Apple <clears throat> has decided not to use the fingerprint reader as right the first on time. All, all its devices. Uh, yeah. uh, Google does the same thing. If you reboot an Android phone, you yeah. have to type. So in there might pin. be a reason for that. Let me. Start the bit. Oh, I'm app. sure there's a reason. I'm. I'm not oh, yeah. sure I agree with. I started with the Bitwarden app. <laughs> it says unlock with Touch ID, and there it there is. There you go. That's good. Yeah, that's not the experience on Windows. So, I am. Um, I'm going to keep trying. I appreciate you guys your feedback. Um, yeah, no, I, I want it solved too, right? I'm just. Yeah, by the way, this this Bitwarden experience where I say, "Hey, can I turn on a security feature?" So I was like, "Yeah, let me send you to the web." Like, yeah, really? exactly. I, yeah. So it, right, and so here here's the pro the the problem in a nutshell regardless of the details is nobody will um, use these security features if they're hard to use. Yeah. That's it. Well, so I'm, I'm trying to, like I said, I'm not balancing security and convenience. I am trying to mate them. I'm trying to make them both. I'm trying to make it both of those things. And it is on the phone. I, I, I would say using your face or whatever it is to sign into that thing on a phone is convenient enough. Yeah. That's how I would describe that. Ideally, 
and part of the reason for that is you're doing it on the same device. Like when Leo signed in with his Mac, with his finger on the Mac, it's the, that's what I want. Uh, this is one step too many uh, every time. I, I'm using a computer. I would like I have security here. I would like to pass through. And um, anyway, I'll keep working on it. I, it may not be a solvable problem right now on Windows. I don't know. Yeah, in fact, and I just by the way logged into Bitwarden also uh, in the browser, and it was fingerprint. So yeah, nice. in theory, the once I've work. logged into my Mac, and yep. I admittedly have to type a password there. Maybe uh, I should. I can I'll, use I'll, you know what? I'll I'll look at this on the Mac just to get even more upset, and then yeah. um, <laughs> well, just to see. Well, be well. I wonder if I, there is some. I think Windows Hello yep. is secure, right? It's a trusted, secure enclave. Uh, yep. It should be. It has all the like the, the TPM was started with Windows, right? I mean, right. the security chips we have on mobile now, all have their roots in we this. We should right? point I out mean, not all Windows machines support Windows Hello. But I guess yeah. Bitwarden's, uh, like well, any but, app, uh, could say, uh, do you support pin, Hello? And a pin not. is considered Windows Hello, so a pin works as well. If you, uh, if you only have a pin, you can, you can do that. You can do that. Uh, and how long is the pin? Uh, for a consumer, it's four digits That's minimum. Why. Yeah. That's a terrible security model. <laughs> Come on. I, That's I, only 10,000 op possibilities. Right? I only need four on my phone. It's the same. What phone is that? Every phone. No, uh, you need Google six phone, on an iPhone. iPhone. No, no, no. No, you don't. No, you can you can choose four. Well, it's six by default, if but you, you can go don't in during. Care no, no. about anything? There's no, plenty of people don't have a normal human being. Who is this? All right, whatever. Look, I'm just I, I, again, the the part of the point of this is for me, yes, but part of the point is also for other people. And what I'm saying is, normal people like my wife. My wife's not putting in a six digit pin. She's not Why using not? a security. I, I, had to, I, had to, I had to convince her to use an authenticator app. You know, it's, this is just, this is hard for these people. I have never had to use a six digit pin on any Apple device ever. So I use a bunch of them. So that's I'm not sorry thing. then. I, so you're right. Don't write this article because you will be mocked. No, no, I'm, look, there's you're different ways to write it. I, what I'm not going to, no. Look, pin is secure. Look, what I, what well, I can do what is what Microsoft tells us. Yeah, well, What I can do is describe that's the That's how Hello works. Yeah. So, all right, let, so to step back for a second, um, on a Chromebook, the minimum is six. On uh, If you have a Microsoft Worker School account and your organization has not edited the setting, it is also six. But for consumers, um, it's four. And that's true on all of my devices, all of them, except mm -hmm. for the Chromebook. I did not know you could set a four-digit pin on a yeah, modern can. iPhone. You can. You absolutely can. Okay. Any Apple device. I do not recommend. I'm not saying I recommend it either, <laughs> but that's the point. My 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 article would not be. I'm a genius, and so here's what you should do. My my article would be. Look, here's the problem. And don't, here's. But don't there, encourage. There worker, uh, I'm not encouraging. I'm describing people and to I'm, do the wrong thing. I am. I literally don't want to encourage anyone to do to improperly we're trying to encourage them to do the six yeah. digit pin right we're trying to train them i don't know that. that one i'm not sure of, actually even I'm the six sure digit pin is not enough really no i, I mean, agree in fact it's if all you, silliness what, what we do say is and apple allows you to do is use it there's no such thing as an ipad that ever password. required a six digit pin yeah. i have used i've owned every ipad that's ever existed almost every iphone that's ever existed i have always used a four digit pin every single time yeah. everyone there's no such thing as it requiring a six digit pin ever that's not a thing that one i am positive of. all right i yeah not i have six digits everywhere yeah you um, do no it's fine but if when you default. go to put the pin when you right. set up the device you can click right. and say no i want to use it for yeah yeah i believe you I've never used a six years of pen. That's why the Chromebook sticks out to me. And also my work and school account. Uh, this It's like six. I'm like, oh. And by the way, if you have a, there's a little fun Windows fact for you to bring it back home. If you have a sign in for a work or school account that has a six digit pen requirement, you have to have at least a six digit pen on a Microsoft account. If you have a sign in for that as well, it will yeah, not let you do yeah. a four for that account. So there you go. So okay. if you want this passwordless world you're hoping for, you might want to encourage I think it's, the uh, get get rid of six digit, <laughs> get rid of pins. Yeah, no, I mean that's I like true it, too. I, I, what Apple's yeah. done here, which is you log yeah. in with your password to your Mac account. Now you can use fingerprint everywhere. That pa seems sensible. Asking someone, is it a password or your pin? It's a password. Oh, it is. You're right. I'm sorry. You know what? So what I do on my Mac is I use I basically use a pin as a password because I can't stand that you have to type a account password. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And it, I, I, I don't want to this. It definitely warns you when you do that. Hey, hey Paul, that's not secure. I'm not sure it does. Oh, it does. <laughs> it doesn't I know matter. It does. I, okay, it, it does. I, that one I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't 
travel out in the world with a Mac. I, I don't. My Mac's is sitting in a. Yeah. We got to wrap up. Over Enough of this. Yes, yeah. we do. Yep, we do. I'm sorry. And All what's right. Your so real quick. Uh, <laughs> uh, last month, Vivaldi released 6.5 version of the browser on Windows, iPad, Yay. and iPhone. Um, it's out on Android now. So now you get that across all the whatever. the Who cares? Um, and Opera, a lot of people don't know this, although there are apparently 10 million users, has a gaming focused browser called Opera GX. Uh, they have a new version uh, with that they've partnered on with MSI, which you can grab. Um, I mentioned earlier, I was, I, I've been trying Brave Search this week. Uh, that hasn't been going great, unfortunately. It's not as good as DuckDuckGo. But uh, they just today released a, an, I'm sorry, that's not true. That's not there. Yeah, they just today released a software code generation LLM capability. So if you ask a developer really a question, you'll actually get a unique UI that will start, you know, doing all that stuff. Um, they also, by the way, one thing DuckDuck, uh, Brave does pretty well, and I, I can't speak to the other browsers because I've been kind of using this for a little while, is they have a nice AI summary thing at the top of it, which is actually, that's that part's pretty good. Um, anyway. Took that I, from Eva, my favorite moribund search engine. <laughs> uh, moribund? <laughs> What's your uh, more Neva, you, I was used, used to pay five bucks a month for Neva. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the pay, and right, that's right. And they went out of right. business. They said, we can't compete yeah. against Google. Now I'm using Kagi, but Kagi doesn't oh do the AI summary, which I really liked on Neva. All right, Richard, I didn't mean to shortchange your uh, stuff here. I'm sorry. I, that's I all right. Brave search. That's what I'll have to do. Richard, run as radio. Yes. New year, new stories. Uh, this is a show I've been chasing for a while because, boy, oh, boy, it's hard to get anybody to talk about Active Directory these days. <laughs> uh, but because we're all using it, at least in the sysadmin world, running Windows servers. Uh, Jerry DeVore is a former uh, premier field engineer. These are easily the smartest people that exist inside of Microsoft, which is why they got rid of them. <laughs> uh, the, these Back oh, in the boy. day, if you were a larger company, you could get a premier support contract. And that meant you had access to this extraordinary group of people that worked out in the field making stuff work. And I loved interviewing PFEs because they had all the real world experience. You Where? know, you were struggling with your thousand seats of Active Directory. Here's a guy who's just deployed a hundred thousand. You know, he, he gave you the high bar. He still works for Microsoft. He's now called a cloud solution architect, but he's been writing this series on hardening Active Directory. Nice. So Active Directory is not a primary exploit for the Black Hats. It's a secondary exploit. First, I fish you. Right. Now that he, now that I've gotten you to load a chunk of code onto your machine, I'm now going to lateral into AD to be able to take control of other machines, right? I got to get off the client machine. I want to get up into the servers where I can persist. And so exploiting AD is important. And, uh, and we can resist it because Active Directory can be quite robust. It's just that it usually isn't. People haven't done the work. And so Jerry walks us through some of these fundamentals of the mistakes we make and the efforts we need to go to to improve this. And this really goes into the series that I've been working on about, hey, we don't have a lot of budget to buy new stuff, but the company still needs to be more secure. Like, what can we do? There's nothing to buy here. The software is free. This is configuration problems. If you just put the hours in, you can toughen up your IAD to the point where it's not an effective vector. And that's the essence of this whole story was everything we pointed to was free to download. They were just tools to monitor your configuration, just things to look at to realize, hey, you know, we've turned on the security feature because it broke this app, but we haven't used that app in 10 years. And God knows we never turned it back on again and up leveling your functional level of Active Directory. You never knew why you wanted to do it. This is why. Nice. Wow. Yeah. I wonder where all of these PFEs went. Yeah, they're out there still, and I, I adore every one of them. They're all fantastic, yeah. but they've got new, they're advocates and architects and things like that. Yeah. But talk about people that fought the good fight and carried it back to the product teams to make them better. Yeah. Very nice. All right. You know what's next, my friend. We're counting on you. Well, you know, we've done we've done a few weeks uh, of uh, Scottish whiskey and some American bourbon. I was feeling bad for the Canadians. So I had to. So I, I you know, when you see a whiskey called Bareface, you know, it's Canadian, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, this and, and on the bottle may be hard to see in the camera and certainly hard for a podcaster. There's slash marks on the bottle oh. to the point where it cuts into the from label. The bear. Oh, I love from it. the oh. bear. Yes. Attention uh, to detail. 
all bears, especially grizzlies, tend to mark trees for territory. In fact, it's known that they will, as they get older, they'll mark higher and higher on the tree just to let you know how tall they are wow. and why you should go somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, you know, grizzly bears don't like people. Uh, they generally will stay away from them. If you manage to sneak up on a grizzly bear, that's on you. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it at all. But that's not the cool part of the story. It's not just the name. Uh, Bareface is a very unusual whiskey. And for starters, it's a Canadian whiskey, which means it's not bound to a lot of rules. You know, Scottish whiskey has to be barley and all those sorts of things. American whiskey's got to be a certain amount of corn, and then it's got to be aged a certain way. The Canadians, eh, we kind of do what we want. Uh. So the creator of this whiskey is a guy named Andreas Fostellini. And he's uh, born in Venezuela, uh, but he was originally trained in Italy as a wine blender. So Mm -hmm. working in Tuscany, making the blended wines. Uh, And then he fell in love with the West Coast of North America, California, Oregon, Washington State, and British Columbia. And so he liked blending different wines together and he started blending other kinds of alcohol and eventually fell in with this group that makes Bareface. And Bareface doesn't own a still. So the way this is literally a composite whiskey. So the what's in the bottle is 100% corn, no barley, nothing else. Uh, and it come and they and I they obviously use a different whiskey maker. There's only two it can possibly be just doing the math. A 100% corn is very hard to make because you need the enzymes. But, you know, I did that show a while back about Pendleton Rye and I talked about Alberta distillers that has their own microbiologist and they make their custom enzyme so they can make 100% rise. So it might be them. There's also a group in Collingwood, which is in Ontario, which is where this, where a lot of this stuff work is done initially that makes a, a kind of whiskey called Canadian Mist. But the mm. cool part about this is, okay, he's essentially ordered 100% corn whiskey aged seven years in ex-bourbon casks. But for him, for, from his perspective, that's the starting point. He's essentially made a sweet whiskey. Uh, because it's all corn so it's quite sweet but then as his own notes say he starts with that blank slate and then he starts finishing it in the winemaker style because winemakers do not barrel for years the bottles might lay up for years but they barrel for months nothing more and so this is called the triple oak because the first oak was the uh, uh, ex-bourbon barrels that were used to make his initial template. And then he cut a deal with the Mission Hills Winery in British Columbia. These are uh, these are obviously BC winemakers from the Okanagan Valley, but they principally use French oak and they make excellent Cab Savs, Cab Franks, Merlots, all those big, fat, jammy French style wines. And so he uses X French oak casts from Mission Hill to uh, flavor it, to give it a little depth but they're only in the barrel for about three months. After that, now we need our third oak. And and, uh, what Andreas talked about in one of the interviews was that he was happy with the the flavor, the sort of open was very approachable and it had a depth of character, but he wanted a little heat, he wanted a little spiciness. And typically you would do that with grain, right? We'd have a little rye in there that would give us the heat. That's not what he wanted to do. And so, he utilized another kind of cask, as he describes it, an air-dried virgin Hungarian oak cask, which is an interesting phrase I never expected to say. But what really was is uh, an unusual species of European oak, the, the Hungarian oak, that they but they use multiple casks toasted at different levels. So there's a different amount of char on the inside of the barrel. The initial toastings are quite light, and then it gets darker, three different stages, two weeks in each kind of barrel to introduce some spicy notes to it. But they don't have a barrel room. This is where the elemental aged comes from. They actually have shipping containers, the big steel containers, to TEUs, eight foot by eight foot by 20 foot, out in the British Columbian wilderness. Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> stacked with these barrels to finish this whiskey. And since uh, we went long today, obviously I'm going to open this and taste it. How dare so you? <laughs> what we have is a composed whiskey, a very different approach 
to building a whiskey only because you're not confined to the rules. Only a seven-year-old, right? There's an awful lot of color there, but remember it lived in some wine casks for a while. The nose is very sweet. Like this is clearly corn uh, and a little alcoholy. It's only 42.5%, which is not that high for a whiskey per se. Do you find um, uh, Jack Daniels to be sweet? Yeah, fairly. And would, um, would this account, uh, or would this be similar or sweeter? This is sweeter. This is surprisingly sweet. sweet. It's still got a nice amount of heat to it. Uh, and it does have a rich, like it's, there's something odd about this. It's unusual, but it's a drink. There's no two ways about it. And more importantly, 30 bucks. There you go. Uh, I don't think you can you get it in the U.S. though. You can, okay, uh, but it's not in the big shops. Bevmo yeah. had a couple of them. They had that one of the special editions called the Matsutake, which was actually aged with mushrooms. Weird. That's really um, weird, isn't it? Yeah. But, but they are starting to show up more and more in the U.S. and they show up in mo generally in specialty liquor stores. So they're doing direct sales. They haven't got the numbers for the big guys. So you're going to have to dig around for this. But also with thirty dollars. Make it into a mixer, right? right. We right. La it, last Christmas things, yeah. we were mixing this it. with a little apple brandy and making sort of a Christmas cocktail from it. It was it's you can have fun with this. It's a fun drink. The bottle's beautiful. Uh, it's very Canadian because they've just <laughs> uh, what what Andrea said is like, why are we going to comply with these rules that mean nothing to us? Let's go have some fun and make something different. And he pulled it off. Mm. Nice. Wow, what a story. Aged in uh, shipping containers. Shaged in, in barrels inside the shipping containers. Wow. Oh, a bloody a bloody raven just landed right in front of me and scared the snot out of me. It's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's an omen. I don't want to say anything, but maybe that raven. Well, I got, I've saying, got the whiskey now, so never more. <laughs> it's time to wrap go. up Windows Weekly. Paul Therott is at therott.com, T-H-U-R-R-O-T-T. -T. I'm also full of 100% corn. So He's that full of out. corn. And aged uh, in, uh, and right up. in the <laughs> not very sweet uh, not but, barrel, uh, but somewhere uh, you can, uh, you can, <laughs> Kevin, our uh, producer says they should call them barrels. Well, <laughs> barrels. We'll barrels. That, uh, bare barrels. Face. Barrels. Barrels. <laughs> They're in barrels. Uh, Paul's yeah. books, uh, Windows Everywhere and the Field Guide to Windows 11 available at leanpub.com. They are must purchases. Uh, Richard lives at runasradio.com. That's both for Run As Radio and the .NET Rocks podcast. And they join us every Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, 8, uh, 1900 UTC for Windows Weekly. Now, we do it on a Tuesday. You can watch us do it live at YouTube, youtube.com slash twit during the show. Of course, Club Twit members are watching live all the time in our Club Twit Discord. You can also listen at or watch after the fact, twit.tv slash ww. There's a YouTube channel dedicated to Windows Weekly, but the best thing to do is subscribe in your favorite podcast uh, client. That way you'll get it automatically. You can just listen or watch whenever you're in the mood. Our survey is up. If you haven't yet uh, taken the survey, we want to get everybody uh, who listens to all the different shows to respond so we get a good uh, picture of who you are. It's uh, shorter than ever. Twit.tv slash survey 24. Don't uh, wait too long. Get on in there and take that survey before the end of the month. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. It helps us a lot. Uh, and that's all I have to say. Uh, anything you guys want to say? Just uh, delete all security from your password manager and you'll be fine. Just Everything's uh, easy. Turn it off automatically. Yeah, just turn it off. I, mean, I don't even know why you even have a manager, really. Just yep. use uh, the same password everywhere and the whole thing is easier. Just use <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You know, oh, God, they call it all. one password for a reason. Mm, thank yeah. you. <laughs> In thank fact, you. do uh, four digits. One, two, three, four. It's easy. There you go. Yeah. It'll be good. Yeah. Well, mix it up. I mean, four, three, two, one. You could do okay. that. Yeah. It's probably live on the edge. That's yeah, not good at math, but I think, I think that's twice as secure. One, two, three, four, uh, five. Ooh. Oof. Oof. Stand back. That's like 25% more secure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. We know oh, who to listen to now. You might want to take yep. security now for your next step. Yeah. Password There's advice. a reason he doesn't have a co-host that's called me. <laughs> yeah. Just remember yeah. those Windows hello pins are specific to the device. Yeah. That's, by the way, that's, that's right. You're that's supposed to have a different one. That's exactly right. Yeah. Specific oh, right. to the device. That is oh. right. That's the point of the pin. Mm -hmm. That's why the pin's not as bad as you think it is. Because it's, it's it, well, it, except that, that people that are people and, and they use know. the same pin on every right. device. Yep.
And it's their yeah, birthday. They should be able, they should be able, Microsoft should be able to say, you know what? We know you use this pin before with this account. You can't use yeah, that anymore. They don't right. want to make it too hard. No, I know. Because yeah, then no. people wouldn't use it. They so which it. begs the question, get rid of pins, use a biometric or a yeah, use biometrics. or something. You got the biometrics, right. yeah. use it. Yeah. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Richard. Have a wonderful week. We will be right here January 17th oh, boy. for our next Windows Weekly. See you then. Hey there, I'm Micah Sargent from Twit. And uh, you may be asking a question. What in the world do you do if you want to thank that hardworking team of yours? Well, why not gift them a Club Twit corporate subscription? Oh, and here's a secret. You'll be benefiting yourself too, because you will be able to keep your team informed and entertained with podcasts covering the latest in tech. So they'll always stay up to date. With a Club Twit subscription, they're going to get access to all of our podcasts ad free. They'll get access to the members only Discord server where they can chat with fellow Club Twit members and all of us here at Twit and exclusive shows like Hands on Mac, Hands on Windows, and the Untitled Linux Show. Go to twit.tv slash Club Twit and look Look for corporate plans for complete details.